Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon here on WUDR 99.5 Flyer Radio here in Dayton, Ohio. I'm Joe Sullivan, alongside my partners, Andrew Wagner and Mitchell Durham. And that's that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in business here on Three Birds and One Stone, the show of the week. We missed you guys a lot last week um, as we were on spring break, but hey, it's another week, new day, and it's a new us. We are back. We are back in a big way. A a huge way. I mean, what a better way to get started back here on Three Birds and One Stone than with a very, very, very special guest, Peter Grant. Peter Grant, welcome to the show. Welcome, Pete. Yep. Petey, Petey, how you doing, man? All right. Excited. Good. How was your spring break? It was fun. Good. That's awesome. It's awesome. I'm glad. Um, Yeah, so, man, such a special, um, you know, episode having pd on and we've been trying to get pd on the show for a few weeks again Mm -hmm. um you know we we uh it's it's we're almost like a professional booking company where we just go around and find our dating celebs and pd is definitely one of them and you know Mm -hmm. he's a tough guy to get he's a busy man he's a grinder in in, i think he's a very busy man and not only that he's also an academic weapon and we here at three birds and one stone we we appreciate that a lot you know absolutely Um, and we talk about that week in and week out but Finally, we found a good time, and what a better time to have PD on the show than uh, our first episode back from mm. spring break. And so, probably one of the biggest years, or biggest weeks of the year. Yeah. Yeah, March it is. is a big month. Yeah. Great and month. Great month. It's been great so far, sports-wise. It too. is. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And we expected that, and man, we'll get into that a lot. Um, a lot to talk about as far as uh, March comes, not only with college basketball, but other sports as well. A little bit of baseball. Baseball's coming up, and oh. we know PD loves baseball, and we'll get into that. But before we go into that, for the first little segment, I do want to kind of just learn about you, PD. I mean, we know a lot here, but just for our viewers, just kind of talk a little bit about your origin story. Uh, so, PD, t- tell me, tell us where you're from and your, your what, what were your sports teams growing up? I'm from New Providence, New Jersey, and I'm a huge New York sports fan because in New Jersey, like, there's only one professional sports team, and I don't know anybody who likes the Devils. So <laughs> I'm a huge Yankees, Giants, Knicks, 
in Rangers fan. There you go. Classic. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, those are some su- successful ball clubs. Um, yeah. And it, were you always like, did you ever, I mean, I, I know you always talk about you and your dad going to a few games, like when you were a kid and stuff like that. Like, how far are like the games from you, you know, being in Jersey and how often did you go? Well, I haven't been doing Yankee games since like sophomore year of high school, but mm-hmm. like, I feel like, like elementary school, I went to like a gaming year. Mm-hmm. So like I've been to a couple playoff games which were exciting and I got to see some of my like favorite athletes of all time. Right. It's cool but like I have to, I have to get to a game soon. I it's been a while. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, especially this summer though. Mm, I wish I could say I've been to a playoff game for the Reds. Yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> not a lot of those. Yep, not at all. Not a lot of those not for recently. the Reds. Um Hopefully but for the Yankees, back. especially you know over the past few years, I mean, really their entire you know, history. There's been a lot of mm, playoff this, games. This is the longest drought. Yeah. Of not winning a championship, really? Yeah. Franchise history. It is, yeah. And you know, they're kind of primed for it too. Every year, it feels like they're yeah. they're always there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the WBC as well, and it's about, you know, just about uh, what the Yankees will look like this year, as well as our other teams. We got the Nationals, uh, yeah. the Chicago White Sox, and the Cincinnati Reds. Opening day uh, coming up. Yep, it is. I believe we are. What is it? March thirtieth. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. next week. So just a week away, um, we get our first set of games. Since he's tradition. Who do the Yankees have? Yankees open up with San Francisco. Okay. Mm. Nice. At the stadium, well, in the Bronx. Oh, they, I was going to say at home. Nice. But that would have been funny if, like, Aaron Judge was on the Giants. Yeah, and right. He comes back to the Bronx. Like, yeah, that would be unreal. Yeah. That will be a fun game, though. Okay, definitely a good start. I know my White Sox have the Astros. And, you know, with Jose Abreu as their first baseman, that will be definitely a Texas fun watch. Is it in Texas or is it? I think, yeah, it's in Houston. Right. Um, so I think our first series is with them. And then our second series, I forget who it's with. But um, it might be the Pirates, I think, our second series. And then our first away series is, I believe, our Easter break. So I forgot who it. It might be the Giants as well. I might have to try and catch a game on that, I believe it's a Thursday or Friday when we get back, which is their first home series. Um, but, yeah, pay, it's that time of year, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about it before our show, um, kind of, you know, how hype we were to get into mm. the month of March as far as sports goes. And, man, it, it has been Lived up to that. nothing but special so far. Um, and and more def- to come. Yeah, a lot more to come. I'm so excited for NBA playoffs. Yep. Ooh, NBA that's looking good. Still got a long way to go as far as, uh, you know, March Madness goes with the NCAA tournament, which we will get into. Um, but, but yeah, Petey, again, it's it's just a pleasure having you here. Um, and, you know, we talk about the Yankees. We don't – we haven't talked about NFL for a while here just because mm-hmm. we kind of been out of the season. Obviously, we had the Super Bowl. Um, we had some great segments when we started our show this semester nice. here in Three Birds and One Stone. Um, it, we're really like at the prime time of the NFL playoffs as well as the Super Bowl. You're a Giants fan, and Giants they fan. Uh, this past week they got a, a huge pickup um, in in Waller. Tell me a little bit about you know where you were. I remember you know shooting you a text, or I don't know if I got a text from you, but I was like, I don't remember PD's where PD was. I was walking to the beach in South nice. Carolina. There you I go. Pull, pulled out my phone out of a pocket, and I saw a gem on my phone. Yeah, that's awesome. I yeah. don't know if I. I mean, I, so I was with PD on spring break, and I do not know if I've ever seen him so excited. I mean, he was quite literally jumping up and down for this trade, and he would not stop talking huge about pick it. Huge pickup, for sure. I, it's definitely a huge pickup. Yeah, what are your thoughts on, I mean, just picking him up? As far as, you know, kind of going into this offseason, you know, a lot of teams are starting to make moves. And I know my Chicago Bears are making a ton of moves right now. For the Giants, I obviously, you know, you got Saquon back. You got Daniel Jones back, right? What were you looking for as far as the offseason? Was a tight end always in, you know? Well, last year we had our – our starting tight end was rookie Daniel Bellinger, and mm-hmm. he missed some time because he got hit in the eye one game. I think it was against Jacksonville, so he missed a little bit of time. But he was a pretty solid player. So like I most of well, I follow a lot of the Giants accounts, and like mm-hmm. everyone was saying mm-hmm. like receiver and stuff, like wide receiver one. And so I was thinking about like maybe a possible first round pick in this year's draft, and then uh, we've made some free agent pickups. We picked up Jameson Crowder, like. Just now, yeah. Which is, he's had some solid years in the past. Which right. Ho- hopefully, he helps us. F- former uh, Redskin, right there. He yeah, was a dog. Buffalo Bill. And I know you guys have had Evan Ingram at one point. Yeah. You know, running around the tight end position, and since then, you really haven't been able to fill it as a consistent, you know, just healthy position. But with Darren Waller, I mean, that's as as good as you're really gonna get. Yeah, I which, hope he stays healthy because I've 
in the past I've heard like he's had injuries and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I don't know. I have mixed feelings about Evan Ingram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and his time as New York Giant. Evan Ingram was interesting. I mean, talent wise, he's a great a good player, season in Jacksonville though. Last yeah, year. at the end of the year, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he was great. Yeah, him, him and Kadavius Tony were balling out towards the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, right. Exactly. That's a good nice. point. Um, Grown, but yeah. Or, uh, Grown in New York? I don't know what the... Who? Because they're from New York, both of those players. I don't know. No, it was just they were on the team uh, last year with that mess when... No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the QB sneak on 39. Yeah, no, that no, no, year, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. They were on that team, but, like, mm. I don't know. It's, it, was, it was complicated, but with this new coaching staff and this new front office, with their second year coming in, like, I'm excited. <laughs> Daniel Jones re-signing, too. Yeah, That's pretty been, huge. Yeah. I will say, I, I love Darren Waller, and I don't think a lot of people give him enough credit that he deserves as far as just his talent. I mean, and I think it's a big part of his, you know, being in the system, right, um, with the Raiders, having Derek Carr, and um, just not getting the opportunities that, you know, guys like George Kittle get, right, as far as that that offensive system that just just flows, right? It's just, yeah. it's just a, I mean, it's just a built for success. Mm-hmm. Darren Wall's never really been in that. Yeah. But I think when it comes to talent, I mean, he is up there with the best tight ends in the league. And I'm super interested to see, you know, just what he does in New York. Yeah, I feel like he's like, oh, top five, top ten. I would say he's top, oh, yeah, five, top, top five for five, me. Yeah. yeah, and I think... He could be like if if he gets into a good system and he gets those opportunities yeah. that other guys get, he could be a top mm-hmm. three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of in that range. Very so, much so. I mean, that's definitely a huge pickup. And you know, I was surprised. I was like, no way. Like, I didn't know. I know he wasn't on great terms uh, with the Raiders. I believe he got married um, to uh, I forget her name in the WNBA. Oh my gosh, a Plum. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look. I don't but, know. WNBA fan. Let's see. I am um, a New York Liberty fan. If you, if I forgot to mention that too. Go Liberty. And the Mystics yeah, are solid. Yeah, they have big three now. I believe. Yeah, I guess Mystics Kelsey Plum, yes. You got DC's first ring. So Kelsey Plum. They broke really? the curse. Wow. Kelsey Plum's, know. she plays for the Las Vegas Aces, and she's one of the best players in the WNBA. And her and Darren Waller got married, and then I believe the next day he got traded from the Raiders. Mm, yeah. And I, apparently the Raiders owner was not invited to the wedding. Al Davis? Yes. The, yeah. It was Al something. He just yeah. wasn't invited to the wedding, and so that was like kind of his his wedding gift, I, I guess, <laughs> which was really unfortunate. But, I mean, it was kind of interesting. I know Kelsey Plum, tw- I saw it on Twitter. She tweeted something about it. He wasn't invited. Um, he, after, like, people were like, just a day later, that was his wedding gift trading. Is that the owner with the bowl cut? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think he, it is. Like, he is really, mad ugly. That yeah. is so funny. <laughs> I wouldn't cut. invite him to my wedding he's either if I was Jeremy. Yeah, the wicked cut. He's um, legendary, though. Yeah. He's been I, I feel like he's been the owner of the Raiders for a long time. Yeah, yeah. brought no success, really. <laughs> no, well, that I don't think I remember. That's some trips to the playoffs. Yeah. Do they have any rings? Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. Like in the, From in a while ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I know they lost, like, a couple decades ago, they lost to the Bucks. Oh game. yeah, they, they they must have had Charles Charles Woodson at the time, right? Uh, yeah, was that like I the, think he started. I think Charles the Patriots Woodson here was rated before a Packer. Right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. that was his young days. Young role. Buck. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a stud and. Again, Devontae Adams, another guy that's kind of, you know, stuck in, in the dirt and the mud out with the Raiders. Be interested to see where he goes, if he goes anywhere, right? Um, I think, oh. And I'm interested. I'm interested. I mean, obviously, Derek Carr. Did he get traded? I've, he did, he's on the he? Saints. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah, traded yeah, the yeah. Saints. I think he signed with the Saints. Oh, yeah. he's on the Saints. Mm-hmm. So, Where did Sean Payton end up again? He's uh, coaching Broncos, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm excited to see if Russ cool. can actually play. Yeah. Um, especially after the so. disappointing te- disappointing season that, you know, Denver had last year. Mm. With, you know, Wilson and, you know, all those guys. Um, but, yeah, definitely a big pickup for uh, the Giants and a lot to look forward. As far as the rest of the offseason, are there any other, like, positions that you're trying to fill or even going into the draft, do you know what pick that the Giants have? I uh, I mean, check. I think they'll obviously the later, but they might have the 19th. Okay. And I know that the Giants also have to draft like a center because the Giants lost the two centers in free agency. Mm. And one of the guys went to Washington and then one of the other centers who started mm-hmm. most of the year uh, I think it's John Feliciano. He's okay. on San Francisco now. Got you. Yeah, so we got to fill that spot. What about the ri- wide receiver core? Is there anybody that you could add in the draft? Is there like a you? Oh no, this is, I'm like, I saw something walking here about Marvin Harrison and mm, he's, he's, just waiting another year yeah. for Marvin because we have we have good receivers, but like 
we don't have that like that big name. And right. I feel like we haven't had that big name. Since, Maybe you should like, do one more piece. Odell. Yeah. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, or even Cruz. <laughs> Vic, Vic Cruz. That was, that was, oh, that was the time. That was an era. Yeah, the salsa yeah. man, iconic. Yeah, yeah no, that was, that was man. I love when he did the cha cha. It was amazing. Uh, or the salsa. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, just it's just I mean, a huge pickup and, and big big news for sure. And not only that, you know, we don't talk too much about hockey here. But mm, yeah. good old Patrick Kane is now yeah, playing yeah. for the Rangers. He's been playing good. I'm um, a veteran. Tell, well, yeah, tell, tell like, us a little bit about so, what he's done. I think his first two games he didn't score, but I think Derek's been big. They went out to Buffalo where he his, he's from, and I think he scored his first goal. And he's been he's been contributing a lot, which is nice. The, the Rangers' top two, li- top two lines, top six, are, like, pretty solid. And so, like... If they don't win the cup this year, then what's the their uh, uh, ranking right now? Like Rangers are in third in the division, mm. and right. if the season ended today, they would be playing the Devils, which mm. would be kind of oh. I know the Devils are two points behind Carolina, who's in first place, but I don't think there's enough uh, s- enough time to like pass. Uh, it doesn't matter, to be honest, because mm. we're playing them anyways, but. Past the Devils and stuff. Tell yeah. me a little. Bit. You go ahead, Wex. You got buddies back home who are Devil fa- Devils fans. Uh, nobody really. In my friend group at home, nobody really cares about hockey. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna much. say, as far as you know, you being a Rangers fan, a couple were you? You know, growing up, was it? You know, family who were Rangers fans. Where were you? Like, so, man, I'm not gonna cheer for the Devils. So like, the, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, my dad's a Rangers fan. Okay, and obviously the Rangers are original six team, and obviously they were always. A team through a team for forty years before the Devils, or right. sixty years before the Devils, when yeah. they came to New Jersey, and so it just stuck. He also said he's been to a couple of games at the Garden, mm-hmm. like the old Garden. So right. like, yeah, it's just fun. That's awesome. That's cool. I mean, hockey is a great sport, and I don't think it gets the reckon. I mean, even playoff hockey is so fun to watch. Oh, yeah. It's special. I think can't that, beat it, man. Yeah. March Madness, Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, and I think I gotta say that MLB playoffs are like the top three like postseason tournaments. Mm, I think I'd agree with that. What I love about NHL playoffs too is the the refs will lighten up on the hitting and the penalty calls, so you'll just see some like very pure hockey, not a lot right. of stopping, and yeah. it's just it's so exciting. And that's it's the thing. Really, I mean, hockey in general is just a fast sport. Once you get to the playoffs, I mean, they they ramp it up, right? Mm-hmm. It even gets faster. Oh yeah, and. Even just like I mean, when my when my Blackhawks were really good, if you, like you know when we were we had Prime Kane and Taze, mm-hmm. right? All Man, those guys. That's awesome. Guys. It was yeah. a special Frankie team. Keith. Yeah, exactly. Brent Seabrook. I mean, oh. goalie. Oh my God. Um, Crawford. Yeah, Corey. Corey. Corey yeah, he's yeah. solid. Yeah. So I mean, even when they were good, you know, I obviously kept in touch and. Uh, you know, always cheer them on and watch their games all the time. But even like people who don't watch hockey are like, man, this is fun to watch just because yeah. hockey's just a fun sport to watch. It's so mm-hmm. fast. But yeah. like in a sport like baseball, where you know they're struggling to speed up the game, right? They're having to make a pitch, a, a pitching clock, right? You know, stuff yeah. like that. Um, it's just, it, it's you know, the fandom as far as the past few years has struggled just getting ticket sales and people to, you know, even you know watch on television as far as baseball. But hockey, I mean, once it comes to playoff hockey. I mean, it is really prime yeah, time. Fun. It is good stuff. And yeah. it's like, I think it's the most stressful thing ever. Mm. Especially like mm-hmm. with a bad advantage with the team that pulls a goalie. Right. And like yeah. Chaos. In That's a good point. Head. Yeah. I can't watch it sometimes. It's and too- again, they loose. They're loose. Like you said, Wags, the yeah. referees. It feels sometimes like watching a soccer game, you know, but it's just like, like you were talking about earlier, it's just way faster pace and. It's just crazy, you know, in the, in the arena like that. You can see the fans going crazy. Like, it's just, mm, right. the atmosphere is awesome. One thing I do notice, though, during the playoffs is, like, there's not a lot of fighting because, like, you don't want to, like, get in trouble and get in the Right, because yeah. at, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you can't really afford but to get suspended happens, a game. That usually mm-hmm. happens, like, as soon as the last whistle happens. Like, those fights <laughs> are just fun. Yeah, yeah. right. They're they let all the, salty and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. if they know they're going to lose a series and stuff yeah. like that. Petey, how many have you ever been to Rangers game? I've been to two. I've okay. been to one awesome. at the Garden, and then I've been I've seen them in New Jersey. Nice. They play the Devils. We the Prudential Center with the Devils, and then we see the Hall plays. That's like twenty five minute drive. Okay, mm, that's, that's really close. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad at all. That's awesome. That's fun. Have you guys been in any uh, hockey games before? Yeah, I've been to NHL a games. handful of Caps games, yep. like just with family, or like I'll go back home with some friends. You know, right. I'll go out and like catch a game. Love it. I got um, to see one actually where. Um, 
We were right behind the goal. My buddy, like, he has these season tickets with his family. So, yeah, my mom's not going tonight. You want to come? I was like, all right. So I was expecting to be in the nosebleeds. We're like nine rows back. Got to see Ovi score a goal, which oh, was, it was awesome. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, Ovi's a stud, dude. He is, he is the most of the PowerPoint. Power play, yeah, goals yeah. in NHL history, yeah. and I think he he just got the most forty goal season record. He like yeah, passed Wayne Gretzky recently. Yeah, like last night Connor McDavid, yeah, got sixty. Did he? Yeah, yeah no, that's he's, awesome. He's having a season. He's nuts, he's, and people he's forget about. Season. I mean, is when you t- think about right prime time hockey players over the past decade or so. I mean, you think of Sidney Crosby, and and just people forget that. I mean, Connor's one of those guys. Yeah. Like for now, like he is our our generation's yeah. next guy. You know, coming up, mm-hmm. change he's hockey. A, He's an athlete that when you talk about the best athletes in the world in their respective sports that we kind of just forget. And yeah. he is unbelievable. So that, uh, yeah, it's great news. Not surprising the way at all. He is, the way he is able to change directions and stuff. like It's, it's silly. Yeah. It is crazy, yeah. especially you know going full speed. Hockey's mm-hmm. silly. Mitch, have you been to any games? Yeah, I've actually been to Loki a lot. All right, so I've been to two Caps games, uh, a Red Wings game. Um, and then a Blue Jackets game. The Blue Jackets. I've only been to Blue Jackets games. I've really? been to a, a good amount. Yeah, I've never actually been to a Blackhawks game, which is disappointing. Mm-hmm. But I, oh, I, I've been to a Blackhawks game. Really? Too. Yeah. In Chicago? Yeah. That's awesome. It's always a good environment up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's they had Rick Nash when I used to go oh, to yeah. here, the Blue Ranger. Jackets game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rick Nash them. Prime. I mean, they had some dudes. They were. Ne- I mean, Blue Jackets never really that he, good. But yeah, he was Panarin. Panarin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. another guy. Okay. And they were fun to watch. I mean, fun to play with on NHL. Do you guys play mm-hmm. NHL at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love some I love show. show. I just yeah, re-downloaded over spring break. I was playing with my buddy, Joe. Um, and we had, like, the on PlayStation, if you get, like, the EA pass or something, you have, you play you pay, like, five bucks to get the EA pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you oh, can yeah. get, like, the last, like... Get, like the last two games for free, like NHL. I think Madden 23 you can get for free, which I'm good on that, respectfully. I'm not playing Madden. <laughs> but NHL 22, we downloaded it, and that's all we did. It was so fun. I mean, just like uh, NHL video games, they never miss. It's no, so they're always so fun. If I didn't play as the Rangers, guess what team I played for and said? Ooh. What do we think, gentlemen? Definitely I mean, either. I have, I have had, my last game was NHL 15, so. I'm thinking oh, wow. Canadians or Canadian team, like maybe a Leafs or Canadians. Uh-huh. That was Blackhawks. Really? Um, yes, I love that. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to so cool. Yeah. No, I hear you. I, I always play with the Blackhawks. My, my real hockey team is the Cincinnati Cyclones. <laughs> I've been to a Cyclones game. game. Gotta love the Cyclones. I went to a game with Noah. Uh, during Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, yeah you were that. saying that. Good time. It was one dollar, two dollar beer, beers, I think. Oh, That's yeah. You should really go to some. They're a good time. We should go to a game like that. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm trying to think of what my last prime, like, NHL that I actually played. I want to say 16. And then, but like you said, I, like, 15, 14, 13 was when I was like, that was like every year I was keeping the game, like, 12 and stuff like that. But it kind of took a break, and I kind of... Once it hit like 17, 18, I was really big in MLB The Show yeah. um, on PlayStation. I mean, that's really all. I, I was just all yeah. in on that. And uh, not definitely not getting into this year, but it's a fun, again, it's another fun franchise. MLB The yeah. Show is. Yeah. I remember, show. like, I, I first started playing Chell when they made it, uh, like, Xbox used to do, like, uh, Xbox Gold. They'd have, like, mm-hmm. free games of the month. And it was, mm-hmm. like, Chell 19. I just remember we all, me and all my friends got in. Like none of us were even really huge like hockey fans or anything like that. But it was so much fun. Yeah. And just ever since then, it's like they keep bringing it back to games with gold. And it's now so like, easy I, to learn too. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's like I, I feel like I, I like I couldn't pick up FIFA. I feel like I really couldn't pick mm. up FIFA. But like Chell is just so fast paced and fun. And yeah. like I, I love the one timer goals in it. Yeah. It's so right. much fun. Yeah. And there's nothing better. I mean, for me, just playing Chell is. <laughs> I, I can't be the only person that does this. I mean, I, I feel like every NHL player has to do this. When you know it, the whistle blows and you and you know you're on offense and you just have to shoot the puck so you can try and start a fight <laughs> like after the whistle, right? Yeah. And, and, then, sides. and then if you're playing Xbox, it's Y. But for PlayStation, it's triangle. Yeah. And then if it's if both players, if you double tap triangle or it's iconic, y, everyone's spamming. Everybody's the spamming because you want to fight and mm-hmm. you're like, let's go and. Then the right stick comes, and you're just. Do you guys okay? Jamming that. As far as fighting goes, and for all of our listeners, I mean, fighting in NHL is you know just throwing the hands is is one of the best okay. aspects in any video game. Oh yeah. Are you guys? Are you guys that just only right stick as fast as you can? Or are you sneaking a duck? If if your opponent's uh, like, what, need what's your sneak ducks? I think. Uh, what's your like? Wait, how do you start? I mean, I definitely start with the stick as hard as I can. Like, just I, back and forth, up and down on the right stick. I expect the other person to be doing that. So mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, I'll wait it out. I'll get a few ducks in. And then and once then once go. I get a few in, I just, yeah, I just start hammering. And that's the thing. Once you get, like, one good one in there, the you can get a combo. Is. I believe it's... 
Like one of the dodge a punt. It's like it's like right button or yeah left button. It's either trigger or never dodged ever. What button was it when you like? It's a face off. You instigate the fight. You like you like as a player. Why poke? Uh, maybe yeah. it's like pushed down on one of the joysticks. I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, I, I believe that I, I like that way. I was always the same person. If I knew that my opponent was just like spamming the right stick, I would hold that RB or RT, whatever it was, and just hold it, hold it. And then once you get like one good punch in there, you like it opens it up where oh, you yeah. can get your combo going. Um, and, and they also run out of energy. That's another thing that people yeah. forget. Yeah. And yeah. when you fight in the NHL, if you're spamming the right stick and you're not and you're missing, missing, your energy bar goes down, goes down. So if you only get a few punches from your opponent, you're basically done for your done deal. Yeah. Um, man, it's just so fun. There's got to be like pros that play like Chell for like competitively, right? I yes, wonder if they'd be is. fighting in that. I know for, I mean, as, as far as 2K <laughs> I thought that'd goes, be nuts. I know for 2K and NFL, they have. Um, you know, pros playing for actual teams. So, like the mm. Windy City Bulls, yeah. like, is there, they have a 2K team. It's kind of cool. I wonder for NHL, I'm sure they have something like that where, you know, every team kind of has uh, a guy or t- like a few guys that play for their team. And, you know, I know for NFL, they mm. don't have like one set person that plays for the team. But if you're from Chicago and you're a pro NFL player playing in a big tournament, you mm. probably have a Bears jersey on, like repping the Bears or. If it was Steelers or whatever it is, I'm sure for NHL it's the same way. I've never watched mm. NHL competitive, but I, I'm I sure it's either. probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, the Rangers play in Carolina tonight. They got to win that game. I know it's just, it's tough. <laughs> Go Rangers. Yeah. Carolina Hurricanes was good, bro. Yeah. I couldn't believe how hype over spring break you were getting on a, a Rangers regular season game. Against the Capitals, I have to. Go oh, right dude, Cavs. that it's pissed me off. That, that also pissed me off. I videos and stuff of me laughing and stuff. Dude, but the comeback was complete. Like, I mean, come back. almost. I mean, we we yeah, iced it. It was it was <laughs> it was three to one. It was three to one, right? I think going into the third period, he was getting nervous. And then you guys pulled your goalie with like three minutes left. I don't see. I don't know. We did it when it was like two minutes left, and then um, and we pulled the goalie right away on the face off after an ice or in your zone, and then just dumped it down and it went in. It was bad. Like the. Yeah. Now that was tough to watch. I don't know. But also, here's the thing. No Ovi. Ovi's not playing. And we also are kind of at the point in the season where we're not really making the playoffs. We're just... We're rebuilding a little bit. It's a division matchup. (laughs) Anything can happen. Yeah, but you... I'm just saying. It's all hands on deck, no matter what. No, definitely. We're not making a race for the playoffs, really. You know, we're kind of... We're kind of (laughs) out. Well, yeah. With Patrick Kenny, baby. I'm so excited for this... Oh, shut up. You guys can get... uh, (laughs) I see it. The, both the Rangers. I don't. I don't remember the last time the Knicks and the Rangers were in the playoffs at the same time. Mm. Never when you never. Were yeah, I was no, gonna like, say. It happened a couple of times, like maybe like ten years ago, maybe like that. Crazy stuff. But yeah, it's been a bit. Now that is tough because I would always like sometimes the Nats get um, starring up, and then it was like Caps in the playoffs, mm, the and the Wizards in the playoffs, yeah. and watch them both play. Like I would just not get sleep, man. No, I hear you. It's always. I mean, it's a good time to be a sports fan. That's for sure, and a lot to look forward. And we have a lot to talk about here on Three Birds, One Stone, but we're going to take a quick little break here on WUDR Dayton. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to Jersey Girl by (laughs) Bruce Springsteen.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to WUDR Dayton here on Flyer Radio 99.5. I'm Joe Sullivan alongside my partners Mitchell Durham and Andrew Wagner, and we are back for our special episode with the man, the myth, the legend, Peter Grant, here on Three Birds and One Stone. And PD! Again, it is just such a pleasure to have PD back uh, with us here um, on Flyer Radio. It's been such a good episode so far, and we're not even halfway there. We, I mean, we got a lot to go and a lot to talk about. Um, and like we said in our previous segment, it is it is the best time in sports. It is kind of, you know, this, this time of the year, you know, baseball is nearing. Uh, NBA playoffs are coming up close. Obviously, you know, the NHL is in full force. But it, it's really all about March, and, and March is all about college basketball, and, and it has been one special tournament so far. Because the last time we talked, I mean, we, did, we didn't even start the conference tournaments. Wow. Um, I believe it was mm. the day, that Thursday, the Flyers played, right, I think right after our show. Yeah, we I'm actually went sure. back and watched it. Uh-huh, we went back to um, in our room and, and kind of watched that first game where uh, Flyers uh, struggled a little bit with St. Joe's. I mean, again, ugly win. but They got it done, though. Yeah. Got a win. Um, and then A-10 tournament, weird how they do it. Instead of playing that next Friday, the Flyers played that Saturday in the semifinal against Fordham, and that was a, a fun game, to say the least. I mean, Fordham mm-hmm. out in Brooklyn, um, you know, playing those games out in the Barclays Center, uh, f- the Fordham fan base was there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the guys. Guys. from home was at the game. Really? That's awesome. He said, uh, so on th- that Thursday, Fordham played after Dayton in St. Joe's, mm-hmm. and the Fordham kids, the student section, were like, Beefing with like some of the Dan and the Lawman fans. The fans, right? yeah. There was. Um, I heard that. Yeah. There was a, a picture of I, I saw on Twitter. It was um, an older fan for Dayton. Some guy he was getting into it with Fordham students, and I don't know what was said, but apparently yeah. something. They were just chirping at each other um, on that Thursday, and then Saturday they got to go at it, and they did. Mm. Um, home court advantage for sure for Fordham. Um, you don't mess around with the Flyer faithful. Yeah, and it was mm-hmm. you know a good game for a while. Um, but Dayton pulled away at the end of the game and got a big win there. They looked um, good. So yeah, took, that was a good game. I mean, took care of business um, how they should in those first two games. Um, was a little ugly at some at times, but at the end of the day, got to where they wanted to be, and that was the A10 championship. And you know, <sighs> with the way the bracket kind of um, played out, I mean, there was no excuses for not making the A10 championship. I mean, mm. Flyers obviously yeah. had St. Joe's and then had Fordham, and Fordham again. Had a great season, first twenty-one season that they've had in, I mean, decades. It's been, I believe, since the seventies or the eighties. But again, I mean, if you look at their strength of schedule, um, you know, don't have too many good wins. Obviously, they beat Tulane. Tulane was like ninety-nine or a hundred in Kempom at the time. Um, so, and I believe their other two wins were against St. Louis, um, and it might have been VCU. Maybe it was just St. Louis, but they only had two or three top 100 Ken Palm wins. Um, so not a very – and their, you know, their conference record wasn't too great, but they did pick up the three seed um, and, and took care of business getting to the semifinal. Uh, but, again, Dayton pulled away and got take, took care of business. But we all knew going into the championship game, all that mattered was VCU. Mm-hmm. Um, and VCU was the favorite going in throughout the entire season, whether Dayton fans wanted to say they were better or not. Uh, VCU was the favorite going into the tournament as they were the one seed, um, and they took care of they business beat against Slough. St. Yeah. Louis. Yeah, played, they played really well. well in the tournament. Put up 90 against St. Louis um, and looked really well, playing their best basketball at the best time of the year. And uh, went to that championship game where the Flyers started out well and were actually mm-hmm. leading at halftime, but VCU pulled away um, to, again, just another you know classic story of Dayton Flyer basketball where, you know, again, for the second time this past year, losing the lead to VCU um, after leading at halftime. So tough. And That's horrible. Yeah. It was a sad loss. Yep. For and sure. VCU took care of business, won the A-10 tournament, and the Flyers, again, did not get a spot in the NCAA tournament for another year in a row, <coughs> um, which, again, pretty frustrating. But, you know, a lot, a lot to, uh, you know, kind of – work towards, I guess, after that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we've already seen it kind of play out. Um, as, you know, VCU won, won the ancient tournament again and got a spot playing St. Mary's in the first round, lost St. Mary's as VCU was a 12 seed and St. Mary's a 5 seed, and already had some transfers. Have they won mm-hmm. back-to-back at VCU? Uh, I believe... No, Richmond, no, Richmond, Richmond did, yeah. Oh, but Virginia. the year before COVID, I think VCU won. Yeah, Virginia. Yeah. And they've been controlling the 8-10. Yeah. Uh, or it was the year, I guess it would have been the year after COVID. So, like, that weird where fans, like, couldn't go, yeah. stuff like that. VCU won that year. But, yeah, Richmond won last year um, where Davidson was 
I believe, the one seed last year in mm-hmm. their tournament. They still made it at an at-large bid, beating Michigan State in the first round, but or maybe losing to Michigan State in the first round. Yeah, I think they lost. I think Michigan Richmond State. won, though. Richmond did. Yeah, they they beat Iowa. That's what mm-hmm. it was. Um, yeah, they beat Iowa, and again, Iowa had an early exit as they they looked bad against Auburn in that eight nine matchup in the beginning of the season. But sticking to eight ten, I mean, we've already had you know some things shake up with the Dayton Flyers roster as Mustafa Amza. We saw. Two, I'm trying to think. Three was it? What's today? Is today Thursday? Uh, yeah. yeah. It would have been. Uh, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. Mustafa Amzil announced that he will be entering the transfer portal, um, and just yesterday, R.J. Blakeney followed him and will be entering the transfer portal as well. So, we've seen over the past few years people entering the portal um, from the Dayton Flyers. Most of it has all happened really a month out of the season, and it's already started with mm. Amzil and Blakeney leaving. Um, and I'll tell you, they will not be the only two leaving. That's for sure. Uh, no definitely, you will expect Tumani Kamara and Ron Holmes to leave as well. But for the portal, I mean, you know, that could be just it for the portal. We'll see what Mike Sheriff Johnson wants to do, um, as well as Kobe Brea. I don't expect Kobe Brea to leave. Um, he's a great, you know, relationship leave, you with uh, um, lit with uh, Greer, Coach Greer, the assistant coach for the Dayton Flyers, as well as Mike Sheriff Johnson. I mean, you know, he's had a great fan base in Dayton, and everybody in Dayton loves him so much. Um, and I think going into next year, he knows his spot. He knows his role. And this year he kind of really was up and down. He's up in the lineup right, starting mm-hmm. with all those injuries that they had. And down the stretch, they kind of just were asking for some good minutes off the bench from him. But next year, I mean, he's definitely got a spot in the starting lineup. So we'll Probably, see if he, I, I wonder if they'll put him at the three or the two. It'll be interesting. if uh, Definitely if Brea stays, they'll probably have um, Brea the Malachi, two. Brea, and Mike. But, again, you could really switch those guys for the two and the three. Mm-hmm. Um, Does Duran have to stay one more year? Like, does he, he doesn't like, have I don't, to. I know he doesn't, but, like, should he, though? Should he? That's a great I question. Think, I think he um, might. I absolutely think he should. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, it, it, again, and it's the same thing with Tumani Kamara, which has kind of come up with how well he's played at the end of the this end of the season that he played for Dayton is, you know, what feedback will he get from NBA teams and, you know, his draft stock as far as that goes. You've seen a lot of mock drafts with Deron Holmes being in the second round, him getting drafted. Um, I think if he is, you know, if he gets some good feedback and some teams are like, hey, we might take a shot at you in the second round, I think he goes. Um, as far as what I see in my eye test, I don't think he should go. I think, you know, he's got unfinished business for Dayton, even though, you know, I totally he's agree. done he's done a great job. And I'm, and I'm not asking, I don't think he, um, you know, if he were to leave, I wouldn't be like, wow, it's disappointing. Like, he totally shouldn't go. Or he totally should stay because, like, he, he owes Dayton this. Because I don't think he owes Dayton too much, right? He's played well. He's been one of the best players in recent memory for the Dayton Flyers. Um, but as far as when it comes to NBA stock and NBA talent, from what I see, I think he should definitely stay end of the year. And, um, you know, he, he looked a lot stronger in his sophomore campaign, but I think there's a lot left to, to you know, work on in the offseason mm, to get ready for next year. Um, and, again, if he were to stay, um, I think they um, – this it feels like this one last shot that Anthony Grant's going to get. Another good thing. Another thing that has really come up is uh, I believe it was Tuesday as well. Um, Jeff Goodman uh, came out on Twitter saying that Anthony Grant will be coming back for another year. Mm-hmm. He will not be retiring. Um, and I believe he said something in the tweet along the lines um, of in hopes to get the get Dayton back to March, get them back to the March Madness tournament because Anthony Grant has never been to an NCAA tournament with the Dayton Flyers. Obviously, you know, that 2020 year, but, you know, Dayton That's fans. Crazy. I mean, yeah, you know, right. some Dayton fans are hanging awesome. on to 2020 by a thread. I think it's time to move on. Yeah. Because I'll tell you who has moved on, and we'll talk a little bit about this, is San Diego State, who's in a Sweet 16, oh, who wow. would have been a one yeah, seed in 2020. So yeah. it's that, that – I hate to, you know, be – be negative, but that kind of just shows the difference in programs in a mid-major program. San Diego mm-hmm. State has been great, and they're in Sweet 16. You know, you n- you never hear any of their fans talking about oh, what could have happened in 2020 because they're all about the present day, right? Mm-hmm. But for Anthony Grant, I mean, it feels like this is his last straw. It is what it kind of sounded like, and I- I'm really hoping it is as far as where their mindset is as as a team because. You talk about the funding they get, the fan base they have, right, um, the, the arena, just everything. They have the talent, the recruits, and then people they get out of the portal. I mean, they have everything to make the tournament. Mm-hmm. And if they don't understand that, if they don't make it this next year, I mean, it, I think right now they're already in the dirt, right? I, th- I already think, you know, he is in the hot seat regardless. I oh, think yeah. the program yeah. is in the hot seat regardless. The fact that, like, we still get national attention is, like, laughable because mm-hmm. – 
I mean, people talk about Dayton basketball like we're still like a really good mid-major program who like wins games. And yeah, we play pretty well there, here and then. We have good talent. But again, I mean, we have not lived up to while. expectations at all, at mm. all these past few years. Um, especially not even making the NCAA tournament, not winning the ATA tournament after being, again, a preseason top 25 team this year. Oh, um, I forgot about that. Yeah. It's just, it's it just, hurts. I don't it hurts. know. I, yeah. It sounds like from the Dayton program, and it's not confirmed, but it sounds like this, Anthony Grant's either all in. He's got to make the tournament this year or else he'll be gone, and they're going to have to do you know a clean a clean sweep with that with that ball mm. squad. Hopefully, uh, transfer portal's hot. I mean, see, we'll see like what we can recruit and bring in. But I think even with what we lose, I still think there's a lot of players on our team that are pretty good and should be able to it's, it's make a run, at yeah. least to win the A-10. Yeah, and we'll see what they, you know, as far as recruiting goes um, for Dayton. I, I think uh, just looking at this team over the past, you know, few years, a uh, thing that they need to get out of, and, you know, Anthony Grant loves the portal, and he's gotten a ton of guys uh, out of the transfer portal, despite, you know, all the other good recruits, especially for our class, right, that 2025 class. Mm-hmm. He's got a ton of guys. I mean, he got a ton of guys, right? Lynn Greer was a guy who's now playing at St. Joe's. He's He had a great end of the year um, for St. Joe's this past season. Uh, Malachi Smith, a guy, and Deron Holmes. I mean, that's a great recruiting mm. class that he got, as well as Caleb Washington, who's not on the team anymore. Mike? I mean, Mike Schrammer's on this past year, a different yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, this past year he got Mike, who was a top 100 recruit, right? He can recruit, um, but just putting it on paper and, and winning ball games has really been, you know, the struggle. And it, it feels like it's one more year for him, mm. you know, to – and uh, people were saying, you know, a lot of Dayton fans were like, he's got to go. Um, I, they think he'll go. They'll think Dayton will try and go somewhere new. I, I think people who have paid attention to the whole story with Anthony Grant kind of knew that he wasn't going to go anywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, his relationship with Neil Sullivan, the athletic director, as far as just the University of Dayton, everybody knew he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, he could have yeah. had an even worse year, and he probably would have <laughs> stayed, you know? Yeah, what all, what all the dads were here at the same time, like, he was playing on the team. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good point. He's good, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, everybody loves him. I mean, he's yeah, everyone guy. loves him. It's just like he's a great guy. He can't but, get it done. But it's the, tough it, business. It's, it's safe to say that it just none of it, none of it has lived up to expectations. Mm, um, it's just frustrating. Agree. Again, it's just it's hard. It's hard watching them and um, just another year, like getting there, getting back to the A10 championship for, for the first time in, in years. And just I think it's been like 20 years. Yeah. Since we won an A ten championship, which is crazy. I want to say it was the year. I want to say it was the year we were born. I was born. At wow, least. that's crazy. Um, that they won the A ten championship. Obviously, they've made runs. Right, that twenty fourteen team was really good. Twenty fifteen, they, they lost. I think in the round of thirty two. Because mm-hmm. I know I'm not sure which year it was, but they beat Boise State. Yep, they beat Providence. And then they lost to Oklahoma, which Oklahoma was, was, was good uh-huh. a long time ago, yeah. a couple years mm-hmm. ago. And they also lost to that Syracuse, or maybe they beat that Syracuse team. No, that was the, 2014. It went Ohio State, been. Syracuse, yep. Stanford. And that what was, a run. Ohio State, both well, those teams were really good. Yeah, that good. was awesome. Power um, five. Yeah, just a fun run. So those but, were like at-large bids. I mean, they were earning those those spots. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. right. And, yeah, they were because, I mean, even though not winning the A-10 tournament, they, they had a really good regular season. What was our coach back then, too? What's his name? Uh, um, Archie Miller? Yeah, Archie. Off it. Rhode Island. Yeah. yeah. He actually beat us this past year. Yeah, that was, <laughs> at, at our that place, bro. That hurts. That place, I got so many text messages after that game. <laughs> I can imagine all of the East Coast people. And then, like, his brother, Sean, who was very good at Arizona, he's now at Xavier. Yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Archie Miller. Which are looking to be good. Brother? His brother, Sean. Sean Miller. Who, yeah, was great at Arizona. Really? Yeah. Um, he had some really good teams. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's Stanley Johnson team that they yep, had. They right. He had DeAndre Ayton that one yeah. year. Where that's when he oh. kind of got in trouble with the whole recruiting thing mm-hmm. um, in Arizona, and he lost his job there. I, I believe he coached Lori Markinen as well when he was at Arizona. He too. went there. I didn't. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Either. But then he's at Exa- he's at Xavier, and uh, Xavier had a first round scare themselves, but took care of business against yeah. Pitt in the second round. They'll make the Sweet Sixteen, um, which will again we'll talk about the tournament um, in a second. But as far as Dayton basketball, I, I mean, there's a long way to go, and it, it's just the start. I mean, these first two transfers are just the start of a trend um, mm-hmm. because, again, it, it, I will expect probably both Deron Holmes and Tumani Kumar to leave. Um, but, again, we, you, only time will tell. We, we're not really sure. But I will say as far as the news, when it will come out, it will definitely come out in the next – Two weeks, I would say. So you just think, be ready be, uh, as far as a Woj okay. bomb. Yeah, right. Be ready for a Woj bomb and see you know some Check Twitter Instagram. posts from them. Yeah. Um, 
And another thing I do want to point out just before we go to uh, the teams that are still alive in March, <laughs> the teams that are still dancing, is um, what Mustafa Amzil said in an interview as far as what his future looks like. Oh, that was interesting. I yeah. think it's super interesting the fact that he's transferring and staying in the States to play um, because what's fascinating is he does not make money off of NIL deals because he's not a U.S. citizen. Really? Mm. So he's from Finland, right? And he, since, I mean, Mike is from Mongolia, but he has U.S. US citizenship. So he's able to make money through NIL. Mustafa Amzil cannot because he's, he, you know, didn't play high school ball in the U.S. Obviously, he played like some AU tournaments and, you know, his team. But again, he was playing for, you know, uh, Finland teams. So he's not made any money off of NIL. Instead of going to play pro European European ball and make money. He's staying um, in, in the transfer portal and looking for teams. And I believe in a statement that he just said, um, I believe it was a few hours ago, he said uh, as far as what his future looks like, he said, I want to be in a big role on a team that has a chance to win. I want to play at a faster pace for a team that will help me get to the next level. Um, so obviously he said he, he didn't text back any schools as of yet. I'm sure there's been some uh, lower D1 teams that have mm, trying to contact absolutely. him. And I think... Probably you know, some A10 teams. I'm, I'm sure most of oh. the teams, you know, I'm sure There's most... No I, I'm sure most of the teams that have, you know, contacted him are lower at most mid-tier, just D1 teams where he could, you know, good, 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 good time and good, good tick mm. um, to play and get some exposure. But again, that that thing that opens my eyes and it takes me back all the way to sitting on my couch and watch that VCU game is playing at a faster pace. And you talk about the offense for Dayton, and it's just hard, man. It's it's just it's hard watching their offense because they, they so there's slow. no urgency. Yeah. And it's another thing, you know. You compare the Dayton Flyers, just such a slow offense, right? And just no urgency at all. And you know, waiting until it, it feels like every possession, the last ten seconds, and even mm. some in the last five seconds on the shot clock to you know try and force one up. You look at teams like you know Fairleigh Dickinson, who. Again, 16 seed, only the second 16 seed ever to do it. Beat the Purdue Boilermakers. Play fast. Teams play fast. You're more so successful fast. when you play, right? You <clears throat> play fast basketball and, and get out in transition. And it feels like the offense that is, you know, Anthony Grant has set up for them, it's just is a little slow. So it's just a lot to work on as far as that. I just thought that was super interesting. It's something the second, to bring up. The, beginning of the, the first half of like the second half of the FAU FDU game was awesome to watch. Yeah. Because how fast paced it was. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That was a good game. Yeah. Damn. I feel so bad for them though. Yeah, but it stinks because like, I feel like that's like what ha- happened last year with St. Peter's. Like once they won a game, they advanced to to the Elite Eight. Yeah, and then FDU wins a game, but they lose their coach, and now they have to start from scratch again. Yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, it sucks. I feel like most it makes I don't know sense. How many players would transfer. I'm not. I don't follow FDU, but like, right. I feel like there's some people, some players on the FDU team that were going to transfer. Right. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you th- look at that St. Peter's team. Right. They no, made the Elite Eight. Um, you know. Uh, their coach, uh, Hall, is it? Shaheem Holloway. Shaheem Holloway, yeah. He's now at Seton Hall. He's now at Seton Hall. He takes the job at Seton Hall. And every, I believe there was one returning player from that St. Peter's wow. roster that stayed. Everybody else transferred. I know Doug played for, um, who was it? Bryant. Yeah, I Bryant. I think it's in Conne- either Connecticut or, or Rhode Island. I think it's, yeah, I think it might be Rhode Island. Island. There's one of those somewhere out east. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, but only one returning player. And when you talk to the players, from St. Peter's, I mean, they weren't like sad. They weren't like, oh, he's a trait, right? He left us. Because that's not how that's not how low D1 schools work, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure the FDU players, despite being sad, right, having um, a historic year, being this, again, probably, in my opinion, the biggest upset in college basketball history. Oh, for sure. I'm sure they're not, you know, going knocking their coach around and be like, oh, he's leaving us. Because, you know, the reason they were even in that spot is because of him. And the reason that coaches do that Right, the the success that they get from winning these games in March allows them opportunities for other schools. I mean, you look at coach uh, from FDU, Tobin Anderson. Anderson, right? He's now at Iona, yeah. which mm-hmm. Rick Patino just left Iona. He's now going to be at St. John's. That's going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> so it's I just like that, like, though. I, I think, think that's how it's meant to be. Right. right. If you were a coach, you'd right. want to move up to a job. And I think their players appreciate that. I yeah. think they're like, go ahead, like go do your thing, coach. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. You you put us in this position, right? I mean, Tobin Anderson, they were they were horrible. They were way under five. Mm. I think they won four games last year, FDU. Yeah, like that, and yeah. this year, they're 15 and 11, did not win their conference tournament. But because the conference champion in their conference came from Division Two, 
they I believe it's four, it's three or four years that you're not allowed to play in the NCAA so tournament. So it's like a penalty kind of. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's just like the rules. The NCAA rules are not allowed to play, and so FDU was the next guy, next team up after a 15-11 season in his first year. He's only there for mm-hmm. ten months, right? Yeah. That's so um, wild. And they, and I mean, the biggest upset probably in college basketball history. Those kids had yeah. the best weekend of their lives. Exactly. Oh, and, they're, yeah. and they're not like oh, they're not hanging their heads. They're not like oh man. But again, you know that loss to FAU is tough. What, what upset me about that game was that end of the game that kid from FAU who tried to dunk. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And I think yeah. Tobin. Yeah. I think Tobin Anderson probably. I think he gave the FAU coach a word at the yeah, end of the like, game. Oh yeah. Give me. Like you wouldn't need to do that or something like that. Would you see that video before the um, the Purdue game where the you know the coach is like honestly I'm looking at, at, at our film that was after at the, Dayton Arena. That was after mm-hmm. the beat. The play in uh, it was. Oh, wow. Our, it was one of the CCs. I forget. Oh, oh Corpus, Texas, Corpus Christi. Corpus Texas, yeah, yeah, Texas yeah, A&M. Uh-huh. Um, which, again, that was at UD Arena, the first four. And those were some good yeah. games. I yeah. mean, we saw yeah. Pitt barely survive um, against, I believe it was... Uh, they played against what Mississippi State? School? Mississippi State, yeah. And Mississippi State had a wide-open three in the corner to win it, and they missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Pitt uh, survived, won their next game, um, you know, Played really well against Iowa State, got that win, and again, FDU took care of business in their first game, and that's a, that's something that you know, you look at past upsets, and um, I'm blanking. Who was the, who was the first team to do it? The 16th? Uh, that CPU's? beat Maryland. It was the Maryland. Oh, team. They beat UMBC. Virginia. UMBC. Yeah, yeah. They they never played a play-in game, and you talk about. And they were also, they probably shouldn't have been a 16 seed. They should, probably should have been more like a 15 seed because they were a more talented team than FDU, had a better year. Mm. FDU went 15 11. They didn't win their conference championship. <laughs> they were the smallest team in the country. Yeah, height, at, I love height that. wise. I love that. Against, right. against seven, five, like 7 4, 7 against 5, Zach Eady. You think he's going to win? He'll win player of the year yeah. for sure. Absolutely, right? Yeah, but I don't think he'll do good in the pros. It'll be interesting. Yeah, and that's another thing yeah, we can bring up. It'll be interesting. NBA is like. It's, it's a little I different for bigs. Maybe I can shoot through now. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I think it'll be interesting to see how his game translates. Like, you look at a guy like Luca, Luca Garza, yeah, exactly. who was it's a done. fantastic college player. I mean, player of the year, right? right. I think he they were was. Pissed Obi, that. Obi was the player of the year. And he, he a lot of people thought Luca Garza should have been player yeah. of the year. Iowa mm-hmm. fans were so mad. So mad. Yeah. So, so triggered. You're not going to win anything in football. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, like, we do not care. Um, <laughs> but, in, so, out of small team in the country on average, as well as out of 360, three teams according to Ken Palm they were last in strength of schedule so I mean it, that's the biggest upset in my opinion in NCAA history they had no business winning that game um, and you know the moment was too big for Purdue and I mean, that made my week out of all the games that I watched oh obviously gosh, that one was yeah. special Princeton winning mm. was great too. I hated Princeton Purdue this year too, too. Well, I'm trying to think of the other Princeton like earned team. it there's another New Jersey team that was in it but they lost I don't know I I'm trying to think there was some so in it it was was firm? Is firm is not in New Jersey. No, uh, I, I think it's down south. But like, yeah, there was. Uh, well, I think I'm. I think I'm St. Peter's last year. Mm-hmm. So like those two teams. But I'm happy for Princeton this weekend. Right. These yeah, Princeton happy. looked great, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. Uh, as them for them as a 15 seed, obviously, you know, out of all the 15 seeds, we saw last year St. Peter's beat Kentucky, and a lot of people going into March thought, hey, Kentucky could be national champion. Oscar, you know, Oscar Shebway. Um, you know, they had Ty Ty Washington. A lot of guys are really talented. Yeah, they looked good. And looking year. into this year, a lot of people were like, Arizona could win it. I know Jay Billis and a lot of guys had Arizona. A lot of people had and Arizona. And Kansas. Yeah. Kansas is a pretty big Kansas favorite. Kansas another they're team. Both- um, but yeah. their their loss against Arkansas was probably a little different because Arkansas has got a lot of NBA dudes. Anthony Black, yeah. Nick Smith. Um, and they have a good, great coach. Yeah, Muc- Muscleman, which we'll talk about in a second. Oh, yeah. um, oh, ripping off the shirt. Right? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So electric. But uh, Princeton, you you were like, okay, out of all these 15 seats, I think Princeton has the best to do it. Um, but they, man, they look great. And Arizona, again, down the stretch, it, look, it reminded me, I hate to say, a little bit of Dayton basketball. I mean, just could mm. not put the ball in the ocean. Um, and Princeton took care of business, and they looked really good. And again, that's another huge upset because when pe- when you think about it, uh, Princeton doesn't give f- you know full athlete scholarships. Yeah, and, through Ivy League, and, and they're not yeah, allowed to for basketball. Mm. One Ivy League team that th- makes it to the right. tournament. And you think yeah. about Arizona, right? Who gets all those fun? I mean, all the NBA guys they produce, yeah. just a huge upset. And that was another crazy upset that people forget just because of that FDU won. Um, mm. And then again, that Furman won, which was unbelievable. Let's talk a little bit about it's that. Breaking. Were you guys watching that Furman game? Oh, yeah. uh, I don't think I was. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. crazy. I was watching. Oh wait, 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 I think I, I think I was like, I, I watched like almost up until the end, but I missed Virginia. the last minute. 
Was that the Friday? Oh, it was, it was the second game on yes, Thursday. Thursday. So Thursday. West Virginia yeah. and Maryland, which Maryland won, won that game. Terps win. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beach, yeah. Um, man, that was crazy. I think Did I was you watch the, the end of the Furman game? Yeah, so I, I, I was, was in Charlottesville, yeah. actually, during yeah. the game. Oh, I was yeah, visiting, yeah. visiting my buddy. Shout out Quinn. But so, yeah, we went down to this bar, Trinity, went in, you know, got a drink, just were watching the first half, and it was pretty electric. A lot of people packed in. It was good atmosphere. They are kind of slow to start, honestly, but they picked it up. I think they definitely had a solid lead at half, and then went back up to his dorm. 12 at one point, Virginia was. Yeah. yeah. they were. De- I mean, they were playing well. You know, they were, like, showing good signs, kind of slipping, but they were hanging in there playing well. And the whole year, they've been a solid team. Defensively, yeah. Th- they've been yeah. some – I mean, they had uh, – defensively, Virginia's good every year, but offensively, you see – times that they struggle and especially over the past few games against Duke in the ACC championship yeah. they barely put up 50 points right they, they kind of got yeah they killed were up by, by 12 they were 50 to 38 at one point against mm-hmm. Furman and I was like and I picked Furman in my first round and I was mm-hmm. like man that's that's all right it was a fun pick you know yeah. thinking that game's over and Furman just had that quick stretch like with 10 minutes to go yeah and I don't know like we went back to my buddy's dorm we watched it and like with two seconds left you know I can't remember who what the guy's name was but he's a Clark. fifth year he you know. Clark Unbelievable. I mean, he's a point guard for Virginia. Again, like you said, yeah. he's a senior. He he's, he's started it. all yep. five years. He's unbelievable. I mean, great player. Defensively, unbelievable. Uh, just a floor general. Kind of like it reminds you as it's kind of Virginia's Malachi Smith, right? Yeah. Just like a guy that go out there and is a great point guard. And just made, again, the biggest mistake. He should have called time out. And he just... And he also, again, I mean, you, know, you, we, you rewatch the footage. I mean, he had a teammate ra- wide open on the sideline yeah. right? mm-hmm. when he got that double team. Um, or and again, throw it off a guy he, or something. And he like. was just trying to get it across half court. And just that little mistake um, is, is his last memory of his college career. Really sad. I mean, yeah. and again, yeah. people are giving yeah. him a bunch of crap saying – it's just that's not if you it's basketball you know like it's a sport man you don't know just what you're, kids. you're they're just, just kids, kids man. Yeah. No, they're, they're just kids, kids. and just also kids the gym. and if you uh, if you watch college basketball and you care about about college basketball and you know anything about the kid that does not define his career yeah, at yeah, all that's what the I, reason they won the national championship in 2019 when they played I believe it was Purdue and you remember they got that that buzzer beater floater to go to send it to overtime mm-hmm. he made yeah. that play happen like that was yeah. him right yeah. they wouldn't have won a national championship without yeah. him that's what, but people just say go around saying oh a terrible play and a terrible way to end your that's career that's what uh, yeah. the Virginia head coach what's his name um Oh my he's god, great. he's great! Oh my god, whatever. So Tony, it's not Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Bennett. That's Bennett. what he said during his yeah. post game interview about the kid. Yeah, so like, that doesn't. That's not him. It doesn't because he's just a good Stop player happens. and a good kid. He's and happens. again, it's what just, a shot by like yeah, firm. yeah. yeah. That's, that was that was oh my god, that's crazy, bro. He it was kind of deep too. Yeah, and just no, nailed Firm it. was a good team. I mean, they uh, did you guys see the uh, Kevin Harlan reaction to it? Yes. Oh my gone, gosh! No. And you know he did that. He said, <gasps> "Everyone, shut up!" Everyone, he no. puts his hands out. <laughs> the Van Gundy brothers. One of the Van Gundy brothers. Oh right my gosh! I what? Forget, uh, I forget which uh, Van Gundy coach. You know those in the NBA, the Van Gundys mm-hmm. the coaches. One of them was like, doing the game with him, and he was like had his hand back like that. And it was yeah, 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 crazy stuff. Um, oh just some fun, really. Kevin fun. Harlan's up there for some yeah, of my favorite okay. announcements. Yeah, he's great. He's hilarious. Did we just like, witness what we I just saw? I just have to say Gus. From college, I just have to say Gus. Right. Or Brad Nestler for football. Yeah. For commentators? SC football. Yeah. There's oh, some great ones. Love Al Michaels. Al Michaels, oh, yeah, another Al Michaels one. Nin- 1980 Olympic hockey game, too. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> Special. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the first round was, was really, really good um, for the tournament. Talk to me about your brackets. Where are you guys at? I are you done? Who do we I have? Don't, I don't wake up in time on Thursday afternoon oh, to make the bracket. I downloaded the app, but I just <laughs> never, I told you to make it the never night before. Fell through. Could have missed out on, on millions, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Bank. Could have been me. Wags, Mitch, who do you guys have? Are you still in? Are you I is did, your bracket done? Mitch, I, I know yours is done. Yeah, I can't believe it's done already. That's Indiana. a tough year for me. And yeah, um, bad game against Miami. I would have never. Yeah, I mean, they came in a little comeback on Sunday night. But. Yeah, Isaiah Long played fantastic for Miami, twenty-seven points, and um, you felt like Indiana all year had the talent to do it, right? Trace, Jack- Tr- Trace Jackson Davis had a great year. Um, other than Zach Eady, he was one of the, he was the best player in the Big Ten. Is he the is he a freshman? He was the that was Trace uh, or excuse me, Jalen Hood Shafino's the freshman. Trace uh, Jackson Davis is senior. He'll, um, you know, he's an AP All-American, right? First-team All-American. Trace Jackson Davis, he'll be a first-round pick. I think they'll both might be first-round picks. They had the talent, but, again, Indiana never really fell through um, and just didn't have it uh, going down the stretch as Miami took care of business, beating them. Um, so, yeah, Mitch, I hate to say it. 
that's a tough way to go out, but yeah, sorry. it's all right. Um, Wags, where you at? Sorry, my bad, Mitch. Where you no, you're good. I was gonna say, yeah, my I, my other like my main bracket, uh, I picked Alabama, and I still think they have a really good shot at winning it this year. Oh, are you are you one of those who does several different brackets? Oh, that's like, what I, I do. I do too. I do you three. guys do? Does everybody do that? You got yeah. to. I'm Mac, a one Max bracket Miles. guy. Really. Mm-hmm. I got like a main I, bracket. I do several brackets until I get to the last day. You got to do one. Yeah. yeah, I just do the main bracket. And then like, since I like joined multiple leagues, I'm like, I can't have them all be the same bracket. You so I usually do okay. like a second one sure. where it's like, Maximize, you know, like the first one, I like do a little bit of reading and research. And then the second one, I'll just kind of pick based on what I think. Cause I usually just pick in like, cause it's like stats really don't matter in March. I mean, have you, have you seen stats too, but. Yeah, no, I Tim mean, Palm really do matter. But what were you saying? Wes? Is that what you were showing earlier? We were looking at Gordon Palm. Uh, we we're looking at what another. Is, uh, I don't know. It correctly predicted brothers. everything, though, or some crazy stuff. Anyways, like where that. you saying, Wags? Where are you at? Um, so I had three brackets. I had one with UVA, which is like you know. Gotcha. Also, by the way, the name of that's Lito Munch. And then I got one. I got one with Kentucky. I thought that was Carlos, by the way. I asked Carlos. I thought that was Lose. Hey, and and when I was driving him home, I was like, you had Virginia man. I'm sorry. He's like, oh, that's not me. I was like, oh, it's Wax. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, my bad. You were Uh, (laughs) sorry. I got another another one with Alabama. This one's not bad. I don't know why I had Providence going to the Final Four. I was just like, they they get streaky. (laughs) And I like them, too, you know. How many many wins? Is it four wins or five? To win it all, I believe it's... It's five to win it all. Yeah, four to wow. get, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that one's, I guess, kind of alive. You know, yeah. max 14, 40 maybe points, so. you know. So. I also have Alabama. Maybe so. six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. maybe after you. Yeah, right, exactly. I was, I was like, after the one beats Purdue, I was like saying, like, oh, the season's a waste of time if you don't if they don't make it to the, to the final Can four. Can you yeah. imagine? <laughs> Just crazy. I mean, the fact they were even there is unbelievable. Um, yeah, but... Uh, about FDU, my friend that goes there said that they're getting a lot of money. Like, you get a million dollars every year for the next six years. Yeah. Because they made oh, the yeah. tournament. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, yeah. you could look at their logo. Just take a look. Mm-hmm. It's just like. Yeah. I noticed it's, that. It's so funny. It's and like, their jerseys. Yeah. You see, it's, I mean, they do not get in their, in their gym. Athletic. The gym is so yeah, small. They're, 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 yeah. So their media guy, their, yeah. um, their athletics guy who, who runs their media program is a junior in college. It's just a student. I like saw that. And he doesn't get paid. I, I don't think. No. I don't um, I'm sure he might get paid a little bit. But when you think about, you know, a, in a media guy for an entire athletic program for a Division One university, that's like a salary. That's a whole job. And yeah, get, imagine not it was like nearly. Kentucky. Right. <laughs> like, I, like I work for athletics for Dayton, and I'm just getting paid like 10 bucks an hour, right? Mm-hmm. And as I should, but like he's doing, he's running the entire thing. I'm just yeah. like a little worker, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's, that's why. Um, which is super cool. It's stuff like that. And again, we see this every year when we see a big upset. Is always the comparison of gyms. I don't know if you guys saw that, but last year yeah. was Kentucky, St. I've Peter's. Been inside, I've been inside St. Peter's gym. Yeah. Uh, when I was little, I saw them play. Random fact. That's oh, dope. I think that's gyms, cool. Yeah. Small no, 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 gyms no. in New Jersey. But I've been, because my dad went to St. Peter's for his freshman year, and then he went to Dayton. He Good choice. Good choice. I've, Good I've choice. been to, uh, awesome. I've been to a the fire C-Hall. pipeline. Seton Hall St. Peter's game in Jersey City where Seton Hall uh, St. Peter's play and it's like a high school gym. Mm. It looks it looks like my gym. Like That's my crazy. Gym. Yeah, my high school gym was about the same size. Yeah, the gym size is crazy. There's yeah. some there's some A ten teams with small gyms like LaSalle. St. Joe's. Yeah. I walked I in like there that, and that. It's like a different like Fordham is another St. one. Yeah. Has, yeah. There's this, I mean it's the in Brooklyn house. obviously, but yeah. Um, Bronx. Bronx, sorry, yeah. my bad. Uh but yeah, crazy stuff. Um, just a, a really fun first round. I do want to ask, obviously, you know, Wags, we both have Alabama, and I'm feeling really yeah. good about Alabama. Also have Alabama. Um, oh, your main Maryland. one. Right, sorry. Which is I not... For, I forgot I wish, you make several brackets. I, I should have put the... What do you think, Max? Max? What's the Max? How many brackets can you make? I only make two. I only make, make two I think you can make, you can like, make like 30. You can make like a ton. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can make like 30. I mean, it's... I'm more focused on my Yankees. How's <laughs> everyone? Uh, but I don't know. Like, it'd be, It'll be stupid if, like, okay, Alabama football has been bad for a little bit. They haven't won a bit. And now basketball. You said what Nick, uh, you, Dave, you guys see what Nick Saban said about uh, Davis play, Miller the, or Brandon Miller? The I didn't know what he said. He didn't, he didn't really directly call them out, but, like, um, I, so I they just I had some, this, yeah. they just had some dude on their team get, like, arrested or something like that. And yeah, he, he was uh, driving, like, 140 miles per hour. Oh, I yeah, saw it was, that. like, a five-star, and, and uh, Saban cut him. 
And then he was like, he said something, but it was like kind of a non-direct attack. But it's like that's how you handle that, like kind of yeah. like uh, okay. uh, Alabama. Well, I think they're yeah, it's, I think crazy. they're on good terms. Other than that, might have been like a snarky comment or something like that. Mm. But, but he's probably jealous. I mean, it's fair to be like, like yeah. fucks money. Nate Oates just, or excuse me, Nick Saban actually just visited yesterday uh, Alabama's basketball team, which is kind of cool because Alabama's back on campus, obviously preparing for the Sweet 16, which starts today. Six thirty mm-hmm. is the first. Do they game. play today or tomorrow? Uh, I believe they. Are are today. I can double check that right check. now. Um, nope, they are tomorrow. So, so I'm today, assuming they probably was it. You know where they are playing at? Uh, I believe they are in. So they probably, they probably took a flight like yesterday. Yeah, I'm like. trying to think of where it's at. It's at T-Mobile Center. So that's some great games today, though, Houston, man. No, that's wait, no, that's Houston's. Uh, should we should we do picks for wait. the game? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say who's obviously Alabama. Um, we both have, we all have them mm-hmm. in our main bracket. As far as teams left, who do we like? Who do we think can win it? As far as you, we guys, should like, do like, guys. like your we favorites just, to can, like root for, and then like who you actually think is going to win. Let's just look at, yeah, let's just look at the games and, and kind of like go through I'll them I'll and who you, we yeah. take. Because um, I'll tell you one of my favorites. They play first today, actually. I really like Kansas State. Especially, um, who'd they play last round? Was that uh, Marquette or was yeah, that? Uh, Marquette. Yeah, yeah. No, and the, I, uh, Kansas State beat um, Kentucky. Oh, yeah, yeah that's what it was. And I really yeah. wanted Kentucky Marquette to win that game. Well. Um, Marquette lost Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michigan State looked yeah. really good. Yeah. And, again, you think about Big Ten basketball in March, bad. I mean. <laughs> Always January, a poor showing. February, yep. Izzo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool, exactly. And Izzo, again, yeah, the last a, one standing for Yeah, he's a great coach. Yeah. So I want to take a look. Um, let's – Joe, you had – Kansas State making the Elite Eight here. I'm checking. Uh, I did. I, I mm, yes, I did. Unless you're Joey Brackett, or you're not Joey. Brackett. I am Joey Brackett. Sorry, I do. Um, okay, so we have. Joey Brackett is sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to our Sweet 16. Okay, so first game, Alabama, San Diego State. I'm sorry to all the Dayton fans and Dayton basketball in general for giving that snarky comment earlier about San Diego State <laughs> not. You know, hanging on to 2020 by a thread. Um, but I hate to say it, San Diego State basketball is who Dayton wants to be. Yeah. Um, as far as a good, a good mid-major program that just, like, competes and makes the tournament right and doesn't make excuses for stuff like that. Yeah, um, so, obviously, taking on Alabama, you know, Brandon Miller's obviously – AP All-American. He's one of the best players in the country. He'll be, you know, maybe probably a lottery pick, first-round pick for sure. You got Javon Quinerly, um, just a ton of guys for Alabama. Who do we like in that game? Pete, who, we'll start with you. So Alabama, San Diego State, who do you like? I got a friend, one of my boys from home goes to San Diego State, so I might have to go with the underdog. San Diego Why State. Not? I like them. They're a Why good not? team. They're a really good team. Go ahead, Mitch. Um, Bama, San Diego definitely State. Definitely Bama. I, I like San Diego. I think we're all going to say Bama because uh, right wings, you go with Bama. Yeah, I mean, I watched the UMD game, and, like, they hung in there the first half. But they did. Bama just – Talent-wise. They just looked so much better. Just, like, yeah. It's tough to yeah, compete against. Yeah, they were in the game, so. and then, like – Yeah. I feel there's another game like that. I forget who it was, but, like – Maryland looked just, good. They did. To be fair, it was kind of a home game because it was in Birmingham, mm-hmm. and there was oh, a lot of boys. Bama fans. Oh, yeah. Bama. So, yeah, I'm also going to take Alabama, obviously, talent-wise. They're also my national championship. Yeah. So I got, Bama's uh, minus I got 345. I got to ride with Seven them. Seven and a half point favorites is, is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I think San Diego State, again, a great defensive team. They've always been a good defensive team, one of the best defensive teams in the country this year. They look great did in the first two the games. They Mountain West? They did, yeah. They look great doing it. And we're ranked in the top 25 for a good chunk of the year. Mm. Um, but offensively, I don't think they have enough firepower to hang with the Crimson Tide. So, you know, I don't give – a crap about none but the tide. Mm. So we're going with Alabama <laughs> first game. Second game, we have Creighton in Princeton. You talk about Princeton, and Princeton. man, Princeton, 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 Princeton looked great in those first two Don't games. And then you got the Blue Jays, who, again, start off the season rough. We're a top 10 team in the country going into the year. Everybody knows they have the firepower, right? With Nemhard, they got a seven footer, right? Good, good guys that can shoot it. Yeah. Against Princeton, who, again, the underdog, 15 seed, making the Sweet 16, and they have shown nothing, but they've shown no signs of slowing down going into the Sweet 16. PD, who you got? You got Creighton? I mean, sorry. I you got Princeton. Yeah, I got to Wet, or, uh, Mitch, who do you got? Well, I think this is going to be a really close game, but I, I, I hate to say it, but I kind of want – I really want Princeton to win, but mm-hmm. I, think, I think they actually can win What's this the one. What's any Ivy League team has ever made it? Um, that's a good question. No clue. Recently, probably I can't be that far. No, but like maybe like a lead eight. Like, it's got to be. I would say back in the day, probably there's yeah. probably a good team. That'd be actually be a fun fact. Wax, who you got, Creighton or Princeton? 
Creighton's, you know, 10 point favorites. Um, and I got a Jesuit bias, so I'm Creighton all day. I'm also Creighton. Oh, I have them oh, going dude. to my Elite Eight. They're a nasty team. Um, I think they've been great. I know Creighton lost pretty bad to Xavier in their conference championship. And yeah. I, I feel like they just came off a big win against Mizzou. Um, yeah. Princeton. If they and can keep Creighton just up. came off a big win against three seed Baylor. Mm-hmm. And Creighton That's has true. been rolling. Obviously, they have all the pieces because. You know, all that matters in March is winning game by game by game. And, and, I think and technically, has Princeton has won their hardest game. They're going to play until unless they play the one seed. Mm-hmm. But, you know, got to keep it rolling. Um, so I'm going to go with Creighton on that one. That wraps up for the South region in the Sweet 16. Let's take a look at the East region, starting off with FAU and Tennessee. And I want to ask, going around the circle, did any of you guys have any of these teams in the Sweet 16? No. Uh, I did not. I didn't make it bad. Wags, did you have Tennessee or FAU? I had... Definitely not FAU, maybe I, Tennessee. I had Memphis and Duke in this. I did have Memphis and Duke as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah there you go. So, uh, surprising because... I had Oral Roberts. Actually, and- no, oh, maybe... I did have Tennessee, but I did have Memphis playing Tennessee. Right. So I'm going to go, let's see. Staying alive, so, Mitch. So we had FAU, t- Tennessee. FAU, obviously, um, you know, came in that buzzer beater against Memphis and Penny Hardaway winning their first round game. Second game, took care of business against Fairleigh Dickinson, winning 78-70. to Now playing a Tennessee team that start off the year, again, top team, top 10 team in the country. They looked really good. Mm-hmm. Point guard goes down, and they had a really rough second half of the year and just did mm. not look like they could compete. How long ago um, was that when he, the point guard got hurt? I believe it was the like right before the conference championship, right before the SEC tournament. Um, and, you know, Tennessee, Tennessee struggled, but picked things up and got a huge win against a very talented Duke team that was at full mm. health and who was 17-1 and one, um, that, with full health. We said that the SEC was a better conference this year. Than the ACC? Than the ACC, yes. I would yeah. oh, okay. agree. Absolutely. Is like, Very good. I mean, with like, Bama, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like you and them was in there. Like. Kentucky, Kentucky's, and then, like... Tennessee's still Tennessee, there, Arkansas. right? Yeah. yeah. No, Arkansas definitely. is nasty. We'll talk Arkansas about, is so yeah. good. We'll, we'll get to Arkansas. SEC's really good. I would say they're probably the... The Big East is up there for sure, but I would say SEC is probably the second best conference. Big 12 still wipes for me. You think? Um, by far, it's not even close. Yeah, Dude, I mean, obviously. They came off a like, fire year, Texas too. Big 12 is good. When they join, when they move conferences, is it every sport? Uh, yes, I believe Which so. Like, that's, the SEC is not going to be that fun to watch anymore. It'll be interesting. It'll be insane. Yeah, it is going to be. You can have that only like, watch Madness. Texas and all that. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. So, Sucks. FAU Tennessee, Wags, I'll start with who do you got? Um, FAU Tennessee. I did see a ranking. I think it was like Andy Katz. Maybe he, he had FAU like the that last. I don't think they're going to compete that well against mm-hmm. Tennessee. And they they've been hot. So let's go Vols yeah. and Rocky Top, baby. There you go, baby. Mitch, you got. I got the tears as well. Um, I don't think they lose this game. I honestly would love to see a, a good little. It's, it's not even really an upset. The seeds are weird here, but I, I think FAU is good. But I don't think they're uh, Tennessee good. Petey. Tennessee, Tennessee. Rocky Top. I agree. I think FAU is yeah. a good team, and, you know, they've earned their way into the Sweet 16. Um, but with their first two showings, they haven't showed enough power, pow, you know, firepower and they're cocky to keep too, up. So, like, I hope Tennessee is <laughs> yeah. FAU's cocky or Tennessee? FAU. FAU. You're talking about after that, uh, F- that, that dunk. That's that dunk. Just, mm-hmm. I, I'm just, that, I knew you wouldn't like that I'm one, I'm making Petey. that statement just because that dunk. So <laughs> I, I like that. I just um, you took that personally. Yeah, yeah, so that game will it's be 9 p.m. tonight. Um, and the first game of the day, that in our last game in the Sweet 16 East region, will be Kansas State versus Michigan State in a oh, very good matchup. I love this game. This, this is probably my favorite one. Yeah. Kansas State coming off a big win against Kentucky and uh, a huge performance from Marcus Knoll, who had 27 points um, and ended Kentucky's season along with Oscar Sheebway's season um, and the Wildcats out of Lexington. And they've been hot. Kansas State again. In that Big 12, picking up a three seed, they've looked like one of the best teams in the country. And Michigan State, the lone survivor out of the Big 10. And Tom Izzo, again, time and time again, continues streak. He actually just got the uh, all-time streak. He just passed Coach K for most Oof. tournaments in a row. Um, wow. Playing against a higher seed? Yeah. That's awesome. It's crazy. So Michigan State at the seventh seed, Kansas State at the three seed. Mitch, I'm going to start with you. Who do you got in that game? You know, I think they're kind of becoming everyone's fan favorites, but I kind of agree. Love Kansas State, man. I really wanted uh, Kentucky to win, and just watching Kansas State stay in that game and end up, like, looking like the better team. Um, what's his name, Noel? Yep, Marcus Noel. <sighs> he is fun to watch, man. He, he, his range is like Curry. He just pulls up, 
and he's so good at passing the rock too. He's 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 a good player. I uh, probably um, so I'm gonna take Kansas State here. There you go. Beatles here. Spidey, baby. Let's Ooh. go. Spartan strong. There we go. I love it. Shout out to Michigan State. And, man, they, they have been looking good as of late. Mm-hmm. And, again, they just put all their pieces together. Always, They've always had a great team, right? All a bunch of guys, and they always get a bunch of good recruits. And Tom Izzo has finally done it once again. Wags, can you, who do you got in that game? See, I always feel kind of rocky about the Big Ten in the tournament. I do, too. And I'm with you. I did have Michigan State going this far, but again, you know, you said they're the lone Big Ten team. I'm really liking K State. I think that's who I'm pulling with. That's who I'm rolling with. I like um, State. I just, yeah, I mean, coming off some big wins, I think they're hot, and I don't know. I just, I never feel good about the Big Ten. I've I've always been on um, that ship, but yeah. Have you guys seen their mascot in Kansas State? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I. Last night we were playing a mascot mode in uh, NCAA 14. That's funny. Who are you playing? I was complaining against Brady, and I, I checked if they had Willie Wildcat in the game, and they do, and it's hilarious. So I don't know if you guys know this, but cool yeah. um, no, Willie Wildcat basically is just a human, uh, <laughs> but with a Wildcat yeah. mask on. So sweet. he dresses up in all the other sports stuff. Uh, so like if it's football, he'll put on like the yeah, football baseball, stuff. Yeah. Wait, that's actually it. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. So he so basically just dresses up as a basketball it. player with a, a wildcat on his head, and it's actually really funny. Like you should look this up. Kansas State also had this tradition where they'd get one of their cheerleaders to dress up as the other school's mascot, and Willie would just lay him out um, before the game started. Yeah. Um, but they had to stop that because I think the last dude had a seizure who got hit. That's crazy. Oh, I no. didn't know that. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, That's wild. The, the, the so, kids. fun fact of the day about Kansas State and Willie Wildcat. No, I think my favorite mascot in this year has to be the Michigan State Spartan. Mm, that's, that's a he's a good one. one. Spartans are cool. Brutus is a classic Brutus, one. Yeah, Terps got a good one, I feel like. Yeah, Love the Terps. Big Turtle. Turtle. I'm a, Big yeah, great. Big Ten has good ones. I'm a big fan of the Stanford Tree. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The Cardinal, though. Cardinal, though. UAB. Yeah, yeah. I like UAB, yeah. the Dragons. I always thought they called the Cardinals, but they actually called the Stanford Cardinal. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. no you're right. It's I think weird. Dartmouth's just like a keg. Is it really? Yeah, I think so. There's one score. That's crazy. A I'm gonna up it with the the clean sweep on that game. I'm also gonna go Kansas State. I have Kansas State going to the Elite Eight. I think with the slate of teams that they have left in the East region, I think they are more than capable of going to the Final Four, and I think they should be the favorite. Obviously, you got yeah. Tennessee and FAU on that other side, and you know Michigan State's a good team, and that's gonna be a tough battle yeah. um, for the Wildcats in uh, Keontae Johnson and Marcus Noel. But I'm also going to go Kansas State in that game. T- Andrew. By the way, the Dartmouth thing? does have a mascot called Keggy. Well, Who's is that? What, what do you? I, what, unfortunately, our viewers that's cannot Rhode see Island. this. So. No, it was Rhode Island School of Design. Why don't you describe that for us, for the people at home? <laughs> His name is um, um, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the next matchup. So yeah. What's that Michigan State game? Is it tomorrow? It's tonight. Six thirty. First game. Two hours. Three hours. Um, so definitely a good game. I think. Uh, out of that region, I would pick Kansas State to, you know, make it to the Final Four. But you never know. I think Michigan State also has a good chance. I don't. I will say I don't think it'll be either FAU or Tennessee. But that game will be a nine o'clock, and we'll just have to see and wait. Coming into the Midwest region, and got some talented teams here. First game, three fifty. Excuse me, seven fifteen start time tomorrow. It is Houston versus Miami. Who do you got? Cougars. Yeah, the can't come on. I mean, yeah. I'm not a Hurricanes fan. Nobody likes the Hurricanes. Wags, what do you got? I'm actually gonna go Canes. I um, I don't know. Do you have Miami on this far or no? Um, are you rocking with here? Houston? Let me go back to the bracket here. Miami. I did have Miami going this far, and I do have wow. them going in the next two rounds. So you have them wow. beating Houston. Um, that's sweet. Let's see here. I don't know. Yeah, I got them beating Houston. Nice. I mean, the way they've been playing, they definitely can. I mean, they looked really good against a, a solid Indiana team. Isaiah Wong, 27 points for him. Uh, he looked great. And Houston has struggled. And they are, you know, despite them being a one seed and dominating the AAC for most of the year, um, with Marcus Sasser, who's been, again, an All-American, one of the best point guards in the country, uh, they've struggled as of late, and they struggled in their last game against Auburn, pulled away in the second half, winning 81-64. to 64. But um, I think Miami definitely has the talent to do it. I'm also mm-hmm. going to pick Houston in this game. Mitch, are you picking Houston in this game? Um, 
I'm taking Houston, but I think Miami could win this game very easily. Uh, like I said, as according to that Gordon Palm video, Gordon Palm, <laughs> they got Miami's one of the dog teams. <laughs> per Gordon Palm, and I think Miami's got that dog in them. And I've right. always been a fan right. of the Canes, uh, so you know I, I'd love to see the Canes come out here with a win. But I, I do think it will be Houston. I like Houston in that one as well. Next game, Xavier in Texas. Ugh. I have been a huge fan of Texas this entire year. They're unbelievable. Obviously, you got Marcus Carr, um, you know, running the point guard position. But Serge Abari Rice, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know the name, find that name out right now. He is unbelievable coming off the bench. He's the sixth man for Texas. Um, and, you know, he's averaging double digits in points, and he's been fantastic in this tournament for them. Texas has, you know, struggled a little bit, you know, down the road. Played a close one against Penn State, losing, excuse me, winning 71 to 66. And Penn State showed a lot of heart in this tournament. Um, Making the tournament for the first time in, you know, I believe, is the mid two thousands. So it's been yeah, a while. Notre Dame just got their head coach. Yeah, and they just picked uh, up their head coach as well. They need one. Um, I'm gonna go with the Longhorns here. I have Texas actually going to my national championship. Um, what do you guys got in that game? What's the seeding? It's uh, Texas two seed, Xavier three seed. Wow, mm. that's tough. Uh, I like Texas by double digits. I also yeah. like Texas by double digits. I I, th- I do not like Xavier. Yeah, I, I, I got don't Texas. I don't, like I don't after, think they're after that the good Kennesaw team. State game, right? It's just hard to yeah. trust yeah. them, you know. Yeah, and you know they took care of business against Pitt, but again, Pitt <laughs> they play with a first four in game, right? Picking up the 11 seed. Um, Xavier's you know a solid team. They're well coached, obviously, and um, with Sean Miller, like you said before, and they got a lot of guys. I believe they're. Most of their starting lineup, uh, you know, can score in double figures, averaging double figures um, on the year. But again, I like Texas; they have too much firepower. The center for Texas went off. Yeah, he he had, his, what twenty six twenty eight name? I forget his name, but he's been fantastic. Yeah, Number he's, one, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. twenty six points and he's able to like carried them to that the win. Ball. You got to the yeah. line. They got a lot of guys, and also another thing that I think that you know, at least for me, when I look at teams in March. Um, that's just something that's not on paper that I look for in a a really good team that I want to go far is adversity. And Texas has faced adversity, just like Alabama. Alabama, you know, with the whole Brandon Miller situation, has faced a lot of adversity. Um, But for Texas, losing coach Chris Beard, um, which he's now going to coach at Ole Miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So losing him and and just playing with their assistant coach for most of the year, um, who, again, has done a great job with that team, um, I I just like, like, I think I like them a lot. I got them uh, to the national championship. I like Texas. For sure. Looking at the West region now the west region has been it has been fun and i will say i think in my opinion by far the west region has been the most competitive um obviously we had kansas lose to arkansas in that last week we saw eric musselman the coach for arkansas um after that game he was fired up they they won 72 to 71 um going on the scores table and taking off a shirt and you know hyping up that that arkansas fan base I was not surprised too much. Obviously, Kansas, the one seed, won the national championship last year. You thought, you know, maybe they could go back-to-back. I uh, didn't have Bill Self. Um, but this Arkansas team, as far as talent, they've always had it this year. And, and they struggle with injuries, obviously, Nick Smith. But they got three guys who are going to be drafted in the NBA. You got Council, Nick Smith, um, as well as Anthony Black. Those are, you know, t- and I believe, you know, Anthony Black and Nick Smith are probably going to be, pro- uh, you know, lottery picks. Uh, they're year. really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're going to have a tough, really tough matchup against a UConn team that I am obsessed with. I think when you look at what we've seen through the tournament this entire year, I think UConn has been the best team um, with what they've been given. They have looked so dominant. They've been fantastic. Um, their, their bigs have, you know, looked great, and they're well coached. Um, and Andre Jackson has played pretty well, too. It's a small forward position for them. Uh, I just think they have all the pieces um, to really win it all. And I think they have know, been playing really good. Playing as a four seed, I think they, as far as, you know, what they've done so far, it definitely should be higher. I think they should be sitting at, maybe, you know, probably a, a, a two seed, you know, as far maybe a one seed as far as the, what they've done in the tournament so far. Um, good game between those two teams. I have UConn in that one. Um, even though I had Kansas beating UConn in this game. Um, but again, I think Arkansas again with the momentum beating Kansas, you know the talent they have on their squad and Eric Musselman, they're well coached. I think they can totally win. But I'm going to go with the Huskies. Wags, what do you think? You know I like Arkansas. They got a lot of talent. I, they got a good coach. They've been a good program for the last few years. Um, you know the SEC's been tough competition. So I think they've they've played some good teams. But UConn, I mean. 
I really think they could go for their fifth championship in 25 years. I mean, you were talking about it. They got the squad to do it. They're a program that's been there before. They've, they've won. They've overcome lots of challenges. So I got UConn winning in this game in my bracket. I'm sticking with them. There you go. Taking the I like Huskies. that pick. That's a good pick. Petey, who we got? Kansas UConn. That's the game. It's uh, Kansas Arkansas. State. Uh, uh, or, no, sorry, Arkansas. Arkansas UConn. I got to stay Big East. So I'm going to UConn. There you go, Huskies. Mitch, what do you think? This is a tough one. I uh, I didn't. I don't know who I had this in my uh, mascot, or I mean, not mascot uh, bracket being, but I think. Honestly, I'm gonna go Connecticut. I, I feel like they they've been really good mm-hmm. so far in the um, the tournament. Definitely and the most I, impressive, in my opinion. They lost to Marquette earlier, but I I feel like they're gonna be fine. They've gotten all together in the tournament. They've mm-hmm. been probably the most impressive team so far. They won that first game by like 20. Yeah, they've looked really good. Um, and again, you know, beat St. Mary's by 15. Uh, they've been really, really good. Like you said, again, beating Iona, eighty-seven to sixty-three. They've been dominant. Mm. Um, and again, they got they got the big man to do it. They got two seven footers. Um, mm. So really good team. I like Arkansas. I've been riding with Arkansas all year, even throughout their injuries. I said once they get to March, they can be a real dangerous team. You know, and, and I didn't have them beating Kansas. I had Kansas, you know, winning that game, but I was not surprised because. Uh, just because well-coached team, and again, they've had the talent. Once they're healthy, they get things going. I think Arkansas can win that game. Again, like I said, I'm going UConn because I I think they've been fantastic as of late. And then our final game in the West, we have Gonzaga and UCLA, a rematch of the Final Four four, a few years ago when Jalen Suggs hit that half-court shot. Oh, my God. What a game. The 11 seed, UCLA. Yep, crazy game. Um this is going to be a fun one too. Obviously, you know Gonzaga, despite being a three seed, has kind of been under the radar this year, um, just because teams have been, a lot of people who are picking brackets just are doubting them, um, just because you know they've they've never won it, they never will win it, right? And they're a three seed. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you have Drew Timmy back, who he's a college fifth basketball year. legend, and again the fifth year, right? He'll be he'll go down in Zags. History. You don't like him, right? You you don't like Timmy, right? I like Timmy. No, I like his stash. I think he's got a yeah, nice like, wicked stash. Someone was hating on him. It's like the Notre Dame of college basketball right. like, at the Catholic school. Like, That's a good point. You think the, the, every year they're good? Mm. Like, they can never get it done. Have they ever yeah. won a championship? Who, Notre Dame? Mm. Or Zag? Zag, no. no, they have not. Wow. They've been, like, and Mark, I love been. Mark Few, and he's a great coach, but they've yeah. never been able to get it done, and they've always had the talent to. Um, so weird. Yeah, UCLA, a really good team, obviously. Uh, you know, Tiger Campbell's back. Uh, Amari Bailey has been great. He's been a freshman phenom for them. Ham- Hame Haikes Jr. has been great. He's, like, basically an All-American for UCLA. Um, but they're without Jalen Clark, who has been their best defensive player of the year. Um, so, and despite him being out for really the entire tournament, um, they've been great. And uh, UCLA has, uh, obviously they had that close game with Northwestern. Northwestern was another Big Ten team that yeah. was not supposed to win, but they looked really good, kind of like Maryland as well as Penn State. Who did you um, lose again? Northwestern lost to UCLA yeah, after lost. beating Boise State. Um, but, you know, UCLA, a great team. Uh, I, I think analytically, when you look at the Kempon, um, you know, just the analytics, they definitely have it all to win it and make the Final Four. Um, definitely, you know, this is a good matchup. But in my bracket, I have Gonzaga winning this one. I'm, I have them winning the rematch um, because I think Bona, their, the big man for UCLA, was also questionable. He's been questionable as of late, but he played the last game with he taped his hand. Um, and again, without Jalen Clark, uh, going into the tournament, I was like, eh, I, you know, I wasn't really big on UCLA, but they've they've shown they've been pretty good. But yeah. I have Gonzaga in my bracket. Wags, what do you got? Who do you think, man? Yeah, it's simple for me, man. Again, it comes down to just Jesuit ball. I, I like Gonzaga. I've always loved Gonzaga, so they, they're going to be my pick, man. I'm, I'm rocking with them. Drew Timmy's been there for, you know, feels like forever, man. Yeah. It's been the last couple of years. I believe but. he just is now the all-time leading scorer mm-hmm. in Gonzaga history. I mean, it being a fifth year, I get it. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, he's... He's been a bucket for for a long time and big guy in the in the tournament for them the last few years. Right. So I think he'll you know he's got that experience. That's the other thing. So mm-hmm. it helps when you have a leader like that on the team that right. can you know and help a, out the younger guys. And a problem with Gonzaga is defensively they've struggled this year a lot. I mean St. Mary's mm. the first time they played each other blew them out of the water. I mean shot that was a out. crazy game. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, those two teams in the Western Conference. They what just was it called West Coast Conference. Yeah, West Coast. Yeah, just str- they've defensively Gonzaga has struggled. Um, and I think if 
uh, you know, UCLA can get some stops. I think they're going to be in a good position to win. Yeah. And again, it's a rematch. So, as, I mean, these are two teams that have seen each other and they're, um, you know, familiar with each other. Obviously, there's several returning players from that game that they had in the Final Four. I'm going with the Zags as well. Mitch, Petey, who do you guys got? Come on now. Let me cook here. <clears throat> Always love the Zags, man. Always have been one of my favorite teams coming to the tournament every year. You know, I, I love rooting for them, uh, especially Drew Timmy. Kid's a dog. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping. I, I, I think they could have another shot at it. And honestly, this is the year they would do it, when they're finally not a one seed for the fifth year in a row. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my money's on Zags. Even though I do love UCLA, I, I love both of these teams when it comes tournament time, but I think I'm going to go uh, Zags. There you go. Petey? That's, so, do you know where this game is? What region is? is West? West. Yeah. Wow. West region. Damn, I, gotta, I guess I got to say. Two and three seed. If I could change, and this is, I, I hate to say it, if I could change, I would probably change it to UCLA, but I'm going with the Zags because they're on my I'll bracket. Gonzaga, the yeah. Catholic school. Mm-hmm. There we go. Four All four of us. That's actually probably, that's Go crazy Zags. for how close of a game that should Both be. Both So now, you know, we did the Sweet 16, our picks. Um, I want to move into our, who do we think will come out for the national championship? For my national championship, for my bracket, I have Alabama and Texas. Those two teams are still alive. I'm going to stick with those two teams. Um, but again, UConn is scared. They scared me. I mean, I think UConn can easily win it. They've been yeah. State, baby. You think me? State, that'll be sick. You going with Sparty? Yeah, Sparty would be cool, but <sighs> big for the big time, man. They uh, need it. Yeah, I mean, bad. It's hard, but Wags, you have Al- who did you have facing in your bracket for uh, Alabama? Um, Alabama the national championship. Let's see here. I got out of it. I mean, I'm still rocking with them. I think they're still going to win it. I, I've been Who'd you have keeping being? up with Brandon Miller. Uh, okay, so I have Virginia going pretty far. I then playing Virginia mm. in Sweet 16, and then Alabama winning. Oh, in the national championship, though, we got UConn. There you go. Yeah. So, I think that's more than capable of happening, for sure. They've been great. Mitch, who do you think is going to make the national so championship? So my OG, I thought it was going to be Kansas, Alabama. Uh, but Kansas did not even make it to the Sweet 16, so that's obviously out the water. I'm gonna, you know, I, let me let me look here. I think I think like from my Final Four, it's the only one left are, are Houston and Alabama. And I, I think if Houston can get past Miami well and they play good against Miami, I think Houston's got a shot too. And I, so I'm, I'm gonna say uh, Bama, Houston, but I think I think it's Bama's year. Mm. Bring it to the SEC, baby. There you go. Yeah. I mean, Bama's, I think talent wise, they got it all. Um, God, and I do love Brandon Miller. I love I just him. Said that, He's a good player. What yeah. if I just say that Princeton is going to win it all? <laughs> Princeton. Yeah. Why not, dude? Come back here. A I, dude, weeks. the whole if they reason. they win it all, you can come back. I bet on Princeton the other week, and it was it was all because Joe told me he was like Princeton is the best 15 seed I've ever seen. And I was like I was like you know what? I, just from hearing that, I'm gonna I like Princeton. I think I have him in the uh, elite eight in this in the funny one I made, or like the second one I made. That's where I just funny. Picking. <laughs> it's very possible. They could have. I mean, they're one win away. Yeah, I can't believe they beat. It. I mean, Arizona looked great all year. Obviously, won the Pac-12, beat UCLA, <coughs> and just once they got to that game, just I don't know, it all fell down. All the, the the London bridges came tumbling down. Like Kanye. <laughs> oh, <I'm bounced> down. <laughs> that was crazy. Final four. <laughs> Final four will be on Saturday next week. Uh, yeah, right. And then the, uh, the finals on. I don't do they do a lead eight this weekend too? Will yeah, we get that yeah. Saturday so, Sunday? Got yeah, to. Yeah. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, Sunday so we get week. Thursday, Friday. Yep. Yeah. So I love it. It's gonna be fun, man. I we got to go back it. to B Dubs for the national championship. Get mm-hmm. the Henny hustles. <laughs> Crazy, bro. <laughs> that would be crazy. PD, who do you have as your national champion? With everything that's everything that you know, obviously, you know, um, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed. I'm just surprised that you didn't make a bracket this year. Yeah, but was too I'm disappointed. I've reminded him like four or five times. It's just what do you think I was gonna win it all? I know. I won't say you. I just wanted your money. <laughs> you card. There you go. I said it. I like it. Big guess. You heard it here first, say, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Stay, stay UConn? Northeast. We're all rolling with the with the rolling tide. The ro- UConn, roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. There you go. I like it. I mean, I named my bracket roll tide. What, what if all the 16 seeds made it to the final four? That'd be sick. <laughs> that is a, a great, 
<laughs> no chances, I feel. <laughs> I mean, someday. I, I know there's going to at least be one one seed in the final I will four, say, and it will be Bama. Hundred years. Yeah, I will say for the tournament. I mean, going into this year, we said it. We we talked about those top teams in the country and how they weren't as strong nearly as other years that we've seen over the past decade. But for mid majors, I mean, mid major teams have kind of been better this it's kind year. Kind of in their year, been. Yeah. and it's this is their year. I mean, you see it, and this has been such a huge year for Especially recognition. With all the upsets, man. Right? So many. We kind of predicted it. Like, I mean, we knew it was going to be a crazy March. You so know? much recognition, and this is one of, you know, if not the craziest March we've had oh, ever. Um, year. <laughs> and as far as mid major schools, they've gotten a ton of recognition. I think it's really great, and mm-hmm. I think basketball is slowly changing. You know, and you even see that in the recruiting process as far as oh, um, yeah. the transfer. Portal, right? Um, just guys. There's coming. just more talent now, right? too, more than ever, and it's the game is growing. I mean, we're starting to get players from Mongolia and stuff like that. I mean, I think eventually it's going to be like the tournament. We're, we're going to be seeing upsets every game. Yeah. I mean, like it's going to it's going to be cool. To watch. It is crazy. I mean, and even you look at the transfer portal now, right? Obviously, the Dane Flyers basketball season is over, but they've already contacted uh, over a dozen guys when it comes mm. to you know people in the portal coming from other low or you know, tier D1 schools to mid-major schools, they've already contacted guys. And I keep seeing it, Twitter notifications. It's like, uh, you know, this this person from this school transferred. Obviously, you know, he had like 13 points a game, whatever. And it's it says on the list, schools contacted by. And I keep seeing Dayton, everyone, Dayton, Dayton, Dayton. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely expect them to get some people out of the portal. And I think, I think we'll have a recruiting class too, a decent one. And I think something that they need out of the portal is a guard that can score. And I don't know, mm-hmm. what do you, as far as Dayton basketball, and I hate to bring it back to them, but what, uh, who knows what's going to happen. As as we said before, we're expecting Deron Holmes to leave as well as Tumani Kamara. They need a big. But, but as far as what else do they need, what pieces could you think they could, should get from the portal? My dad brought something up that I thought was kind of interesting. He said back just in the last few years, he thought that Dayton, it's kind of weird this year that they're so tall. In the past, they've been a shorter yeah. team. Like shift your guys, you know. One, that I feel like just moved the ball around a little better. I remember one year, I, th- I think it was 2016, they didn't play in the first four as a, in an away team against Boise State here. And I remember the tallest player on the team was like 6'7. Yeah. That's like Andrew yeah. Pollard, I think. Yeah. He was good. He was tough. Got rebounds, but like. I'd like some. <clears throat> I like staying tall, honestly, especially in today's game. You definitely need I, height. Like, that's yeah, for sure. For sure. My dream LeBron. player. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need like a LeBron or something. And, and, well, the advantage that Dayton has had the past two years is, is height, especially this year. I mean, compared to every other team in the conference. I mean, I mean we have the tallest lineup in, on every, NC, in, the, yeah, in the country. Like, for right? a little bit there. And e- even then, they've struggled to, you know, get their offense flowing. I think, you know, Malachi Smith has been great. Um, obviously, we'll see what Kobe Brea does and you know what Mike Sharp Johns does as well. But I think they got to get a scoring guard out of the portal, a guy that yeah. can just score. Get, you know, go like out there and get a bucket. Because and Kobe Elvis, I keep forgetting him. He's another guy that you know. Who knows with his injury if he'll hit the portal as well. He already came from DePaul. Um, he might. Hit, he's expected to stay because you know at that two position, you, mm. at the, you know shooting guard position. He's already he's had that on lock. Right, mm. one healthy. Um, but we'll see what Anthony Grant in uh, Dayton tries to do recruiting wise. Um, I'd really like a, a a fast four, like some dude that can that's tall and get the boards, and then sounds like Tumani Kamara. Yeah, yeah, I mean pretty much, but someone that can actually handle the ball a little bit better than Tumani. I, I don't mind about scoring, but just being quick, getting the ball down, leading the fast break, like something like that. I I don't know. I feel like um, because that's where I feel like we're not going to get Tumani back. I have had. Do you know any of the recruits we're going for? Uh, they they got a few guys. I mean, what about that French dude? You know who I'm talking Jazz about? Jazz Gardner, the seven footer. Did he commit somewhere else yet, or I is he? I think he did. I'm not. I, I'm pretty sure he did, unless he decommitted. But Let yeah, see. I, he's definitely off the board. I think he was he posted on his Instagram that he committed. Bronny James is still not committed. That's something crazy. I think April first is the deadline. Right? Isn't that how it works? I really don't I think know. It is, yeah. Know. Um, so, <laughs> there's all most of the 2023s are gone. We should be looking at 2024. So, uh, I don't know who Dayton has in store. Obviously, they had Mike last year and some walk-ons, but um, it's be the transfer portal. It's going to be the portal. Absolutely, yeah. it's going to be the portal. Um, so it's going to be definitely interesting. Um, but we are almost running out of time here. We have 
only a few minutes left, but I do want to take a quick one song break before we get to our final segment of the day. And uh, I know Petey's really excited about this one mm-hmm. in our stone of the week, but we're going to take a quick little break here on WUDR Dayton Radio. We'll be right back after the break. Dayton Radio here, Flyer Radio on 99.5. I'm Joe Sullivan alongside these fine young gentlemen, Andrew Wagner and Money Money Mitch. Cha-ching. And our guest of the week, our stoner of the week, Peter Grant. Peter Grant, it's been fun. Welcome what up? back. What up? Peter. Peter. Hey, Peter. Peter. <laughs> it's good to have you back, PP. Joycey. It's been it's been fun, boss man. Situation. Um, and uh, oh, we we've had back to back. Jersey. That's true. Jersey repping. Squad. Mm. <laughs> Shout out Miss Shelby. It was a great episode you should have of Miss Shelby. The Jersey uh, boy and girl at the beach, man. They, they're loving that East Coast water. Uh, you know they're used to it. The first thing Pete does when we got there, jumps into the ocean. Bro. I love it. It was even cold. It was a little cold, but I was like, nah, this is... 
It felt fine. Not like too Jersey. shabby. It was cold, though. They yeah. like the show. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not the <laughs> <laughs> show. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is. I'm getting a little teary eyed because it's been such a good episode with Pete. Um, mm-hmm. And again, we've been that. trying to get him on forever. And man, it's just been so fun. I it's, got on, I was like, even a sure. call in was tough, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's been so been fun. Good. And, you know, just getting him on and finally just a great way to come off of our spring break. Uh, And now we are on our special segment of the day, which are Stone of the Week. We usually do start with our guest, Petey. If you're not ready, that's okay. Are you ready? All right, let's hear it. Petey, Stone of the Week. Let's hear it, boss. My Stone of the Week is I'm looking forward to this weekend with a lot of college basketball. Yeah. Spending time with my friends. Yeah. Especially here at this weekend at the University of Dayton. It's going to be a blast. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Go ahead, Money Mitch. I can go here. I, you know, I, I've been thinking here. I, I think I have an obvious stone, and then I, I think a more deep stone. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to start with the more deep stone, you know. Uh, this time of the week, or this time of the year, by the way, uh, is what I meant. Um, it, it's, it, it's very... It's very happy, and it's you know big time for the University of Dayton as we do celebrate St. Patty's this weekend. And, uh, you know, I just I want everyone to... Keep that vibes going, you know, just stay happy, be close to your brothers, be close to your friends, you know, family, Yeah. Uh, be responsible and smart. And be responsible. Uh, it's big. It's great advice. Mitch. I Absolutely. think it's, it's a hard thing to remember. You have to be responsible sometimes. But, uh, you know, as a future educator of America, you know, that's something that you have to hold yourself to. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's what I love. That's what we love. That's what we love to hear. Um, and then just like the thing I'm actually looking forward to or like <laughs> uh, is St. Patty's, you know, Absolutely. it's going to it's going to be a great time this totally weekend. Forgot. It's going to be fun. Uh, maybe we'll have to stop by the stew or something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we might, we might we have to, I know sure. last year we, we talked went to about our this. Street. We went to our street and we were like, what oh, is yeah, this place? I've never been. Yeah. And then we went to Dewey's. Dewey's, bro. I can't believe we did that. We like rolled like 12 deep into Dewey's. On St. Patty's. It was electric. It was heat though. It was a good pizza. Dewey's pizza, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wags, that's a great stone. Uh, you got, I love like it. Right next to uh, Five Guys. Yeah, right, right over there by yeah, all that stuff. Wags is here. Stone of the week. The really nice words. This is what we wait for. Really good words, Mitch. You know, and we're back at school. We got to get back on that grind. And we always talk about every week. You know, we're on our academic weapon behavior. It's a mentality. It's a lifestyle. And over break, you know, I was watching some movies. I was watching Animal House. And I want to mm-hmm. shout out the, the late, great John Belushi, you mm-hmm. know. Facts. Had a problem with cocaine, but hey, funny Happens guy. Happens to the best. Funny guy. <laughs> and um, the one, you know, quote that, that he said that really resonates with me and has for a while is, you know, when the tough gets going, or when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, it's, it's that time of the year. We, we have a lot to look Love forward that. to, a lot of fun on the weekend. Let's get after it. Let's get, you know, let's get the academic weapons. Right. And let's just let's get, get our squad together. Let's and have, let's, and let's go crazy. Let's have a crazy time. Let's get active. Let's, let's get, get active. active. And be safe, And be you safe, know? respectful. I, I responsible. like, I love Mitch's words, you know, let's be responsible, look after each other, but hey, get our stuff done. Let's grind out, get it together, and then let's go crazy this weekend. There you go. Mm. And man, man, It's I a work it. hard, play I'm hard sm- mentality. I'm we smelling love the gold at the end of the rainbow right as we see mm-hmm. right Absolutely. Now. As we come on. Ahoy, matey. We are coming up on St. Patty's Eve, and oh boy. I, I can good. feel it in can, the air. You can feel it in the air here. It. You can it's smell crazy. It. You can We're smell magically it. delicious. Today, right? Walking to class, it's spring, baby. Man, man. get that Nothing alarm. Better than get this, that man. alarm ready, ladies and gentlemen. 355. 355. I love it. Man, I'm, no, I'm going to be 345. I'll beat it by five. I'm going to be 330. We'll see. <laughs> Just get up. Just get up and go. Get it. We get up and go. You guys feel it? Oh, I can feel it. It's tingling. It's tingling. I'm getting excited. The ocean is just. Peaceful. No, it will be a fun one. Saturday I'm ready to see campus tonight. Absolutely. I think tonight is usually, I feel like, when it starts. Mm-hmm. And then it's like Friday. We'll, we'll see, you know, everybody gets ready. Again, calm for a storm. And There'll be a lot of movie nights around we, the campus, more than usual. And then we get up and go. The entire campus will be up. Uh, up and up and early squirrely on Saturday. Mm-hmm. I, it's a lot more than just the campus. Facts. <laughs> Facts. As we I, we normally double slash triple in size this weekend, which oh, is yeah. kind of my favorite fun fact yeah. of this weekend. place to be. It's going to be a lot of people. A lot of friends from students that go here, and there's also a lot of others. 
others. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're hosting Legendary. about three wow. different, you know, whole schools this weekend. Yeah, yeah right. Last year it was like a hotel. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> about to be an orphanage this weekend. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and I think we just got to prove to the other schools that we are the home of St. Patty's, yeah. especially in the Midwest. Yeah, we, we run it, and, and we the also, ginger run is we ours. We also started the ginger run. I would and like that is that us. Is that, fa- is that true? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. We, we Notre Dame. That. People try to steal. That's been going on since my dad went. Notre Dame kind of just. They all, yeah, Notre Dame, Miami, they all are kind of just. Yeah. Hate us hey, so, because they ain't us. Yep, absolutely. So for my final, you know, my stone of the week, um, we always get, you know, our street love. And man, you guys, you guys enjoyed your street today? Yes. Absolutely. It's amazing. Standing, right? Good God, sprint. I, I'm not trying to uh, tell the fans, but I, I did get a Zeppelin. I did mm, not get hurts. a spring scene today. But that's um, okay. Hey, switching up. It's good but I had to switch it up. That's all right. And, you know, we always show um, them love. And we shout out to uh, Miss Shelby. She was great. She was a goat show. yesterday. Absolutely. And, you know, I love the spring scene. I had it twice yesterday, which is crazy. But I did not have a spring scene before our show. And not I always the first, do. Not the last. Not the last. And I didn't have one before the show. And that's because I had two breakfast sandwiches at the bistro today mm. and they were fantastic back to back I didn't even oh, I didn't yeah, take a yeah, breath that'll knock um, you out you wolfed it down. done it many yeah, times a, a bacon, many bacon times. egg and cheese with hot sauce the Aki way on uh, <laughs> on an Jack? everything bagel and it was I, I think I got American that's okay Whoa, though that's okay because, because I, no because I let Miss Kate Newell cook shout out to Miss Kate Newell she cooked mine too go. shout her it was pretty good right? I could use a little more hot sauce next time but everything else shout out to Kate Newell it was special Shelby, if you're listening, it's called Taylor Ham. <laughs> it's Taylor Ham. Taylor Ham. Taylor Ham. It is. Tailored ham. But um, yeah, my bistro sandwiches were fantastic. Um, and yeah, just shout out Flyer Enterprise. Shout out FE, man. Bistro is it's up there. Their their breakfast sandwiches are the real deal. Um, and oh, great they stuff. They don't have ketchup though. It's like it's a thing. Mm. They don't have ketchup. You, they gotta add that. You oh. should, you should email them. You should. Email you can get them. ketchup. You need to just bring some with you. I, I saw a dude get ketchup earlier this morning. You should email them. You should. But anyways, yeah, that, that wraps it up for our Stones of the Week. Uh, before we end it, Petey, special thank you, man. It yeah, was such a fun you, time man. having you on. Thanks, Pete. It was, it was fun. It's it a was pleasure. a pleasure. Love you. It was, it. It was great talking Glad sports. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking before. My bunk, man. <laughs> we'll definitely have you back on. Yeah, um, it's, I mean, just, you know. PD is really one of the best people to talk to about with sports, and he, he mm. knows the stuff, and just such a, a fun time. Pretty sports on, heavy so. week for us, but I feel like it's, it's, it yeah. is March. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So March. thank you so much for joining. Oh PD. my gosh, we didn't even talk time. about the Last of Us. Yeah, next week. I was gonna bring that for my stone, but that, those breakfast mm. sandwiches, sandwiches are special. Ooh. Shout out to Bistro, <laughs> shout out to K for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, PD, thank you so much. Such a fun time, and uh, we'll definitely have you back, boss. Appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. And that is gonna wrap it up for this episode, our first episode. Out of spring break here Ooh. on WUDR. Dayton. Six weeks left. Absolutely. For Money, Mitch, and Wags, I'm Joe Sullivan. Thank you, everybody, to tuning for tuning in to WUDR 4, Three Birds and One Stone. Again, you can follow us on Instagram, Three Birds, One Stone. The one is a numbaro. And you'll be able to see, see Peter Grant in the studio today. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We'll be right back, same time, on Thursday, next week. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.